Woohoo! Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> it is an awesome morning. I'm coming to you all from Virginia. I am in uh, probably what, Luray, Virginia, right now. So praise the Lord for that. This is awesome. Stanley, Luray, uh, let me send out the invites. Woohoo! Let me invite our special guest. Y'all, today we have Apostle Claire Revealed on here. I'm telling you, an awesome woman of God, a beautiful woman in Christ. Uh, she travels the globe. She goes into all the nations. Hey, you guys, I see Stephen on here, Cassandra, Vincent. I see Pam, uh, Pamela. Uh, so many other people are hopping on here. Please share the broadcast because, you know, anytime Apostle Claire Revealed is on here, hey, Dusty, it is a fiery broadcast. I will tell you that. Talk about fiery. This is an anointed woman of God. Let me make it to where she can add herself, whoops, as a guest onto the broadcast. It'll take her just a minute to get that, probably the um, invite through Facebook. You know how that is. If y'all see her hop on here before I do, please mention, okay, I see her. Let me try to get her on here. Oh, dear. Oh, there it is. Um, could one of you hand me my earbuds? They're over there. They're located over there. The white container. Yes, that's it. So let me try to, she can send an invite. Oh, why does that happen? Every time I try to touch that, it does that. Okay, let me add her to the screen here. You guys, she. It's the word of the Lord. I'm just telling you. I'm excited. Not only the Lord, my personal relationship with the Lord, but I also learn from other people. Come on. We learn this way and we learn this way. And the day we think we can't learn that way is the day something's wrong with us. You know what I'm saying? I see Apostle Jonathan, uh, John Flatman on here. Apostle Claire Reville, beautiful woman of God. <laughs> Blessings. Do you have some Bless earbuds? Do you have some earbuds? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Powerful. We are said. Wow. Can you hear me clearly? It's kind of muffled. I don't know if it's uh, my end or your end. Do you have earbuds in? Um, no, let me, let me get one. Let me get one. Just yes, one. please. Okay, so she's going to grab those. She has a fiery, fiery, beautiful word for us today. And I think my yes. tripod is a little bit, um, high or low. Let me get this on. Let me check this. Check that. I am so excited. We're both kind of getting set up here because you know how that is. Yeah. Especially yes. since I'm not at home, I am on location. Oh. Um, My stuff, I have a new phone. I don't know how to function with this. So, um, do I, I got is, a new is, it one. Like, is it like because I have the ventilator on? It's frozen for just a minute. Oh, there you go. I have the ventilator on. Is that what you are hearing? Maybe it may be. Okay, let me put that off, but it's hot in Holland. Oh, so she's coming let to us today in ho from Holland, you guys. Apostle Claire revealed she doesn't live here in the United States of America. <laughs> so I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Yes, Apostle, bless you, bless you, bless you. Bless you. Wow. So tell us, I have been seeing you in Paris. I've been seeing you like all over the place. You travel the globe. God has you in so many different arenas. And that is big. It's huge, especially for women. You know, you're taking those mandate mountains for the Lord. And oh, I just yeah. love it. Yes, yes. God's been so good to me. Um, God is great. God is wonderful. Everything is just perfect the way I want it for this year. When I came in this year, God told me from last year, he said, this year, 2019, is going to be the year of the rebirth for you and for those who, you know, follow your ministry and all of that connected to you in that way. And I've really lived to see the rebirth. I've seen God also reopening some wells and reopening the wells have to do also with the rebirth. I've seen God uh, restore some really... Uh, key relationships, um, open new doors, but reopen the doors that the enemy came like the Philistines and just shut. So it's been amazing. It's been a marathon. Um, I got new doors open this year. I went to Brazil. 
Um, I was there last year, but when I went this year, God just double, double broke that place open and just released the glory. And it's just been an amazing here. Um, I've gone to a couple of nations this year. I still have a couple to go before the year ends. So I'm very excited about what God is doing. I'm eating myself crazy. I'm getting bigger and bigger. And, you know, but all is good. I'm well. And uh, I'm excited about what God is going to do with this broadcast and before we yeah. go any further apostle i just want to celebrate you i want to thank you um for having me on on this wonderful platform i see what god is doing i see what god is using you to do all over the the, the globe also as you move in your mandate so i don't take this invitation lightly i just thank you for your obedience for your tenacity to keep on moving pushing forward as a powerful, mighty, apostolic woman that you are, a voice of prophecy that you are also. So I just celebrate you in this hour. Blessings. Thank you so much. That is such an honor for you to yeah. say that. I just appreciate that myself. Wow. Thank you so much. You guys, I yeah. want y'all to share the broadcast. Please start watch parties. Please invite people. Yeah. Tell the people yes. on your watch party when you start it to come back to the original video. If they want us to interact with their comments, that's the only downside mm -hmm. to starting a watch party is that although they'll see the video when they comment on the watch party, unless they go to the original video, we don't get to see live their comments. Um, so true. start your watch parties, invite people, get them on the broadcast. It's in the middle of the day. A lot of my people are at work right now. And so they're mm -hmm. not able to, you know, it's not before work when I normally go live and it's not after they're home and settled and the kids are in bed. So this is in the yeah. middle of maybe their work day. But if you can at least have it on, even if you can't listen to everything, you're going to get mm -hmm. such an investment put into you today. There's going to be yes. such a word and a flow um, as you are literally the fire and the flame and the anointing of God is going to infuse every single person on here today. Please let me know you shared the video. Please put shared and start those watch parties. Share it also into any groups. I know I've had about 20 to 30 different group owners just in the last two to three weeks reach out to me um, and yeah. invite me into their groups. It may have been more than that. And I just want to wow. say thank you for that because, you know, that's a privilege right there when people yeah. invite you to be in their groups and they tell you, uh -huh. please post in our groups. And I know I haven't done a lot of posting in groups the last couple of weeks, though, since I've been invited. And that is because I've been so busy doing, um, you know, I've got tons of messages. So I, my apologies for not getting out there and in, getting into those messages. But I'm sure Apostle Claire Revealed can understand that, you know, when you're yep. gone certain places, some things have to fall away when you're doing the work of the Lord. And you kind of hit true. the high points, the things that are the most necessary. So That's hello true. to my students. Wow. So please give us some kind of an update, your recent thing, and then also the word of the Lord that you have today, Apostle, for us. Well, um, God's been very good. I don't know if I can say that I am right over here. You know, I just released my um, new book. So um. Have you got a copy in your hands yet? Have you got? Yes. Let, oh! let me grab that. Let me grab that. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Oh, I'm yes, so excited. I do, I do. Hello, Wanjiro. Shiam. Please let us know your city and state. We want to know where you're from. Y'all are such beautiful people. I cannot wait to see. Ah! Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Please tell us the title and all of that. So the, the title of the book is Every Esther Needs a Mordecai. Every Esther needs a Mordecai, the power of spiritual authority. And the foreword oh. is done by my father in the Lord, Apostle Ryan Lestrange. Oh I'm my very goodness. Excited. Wow. Yes. Wow. That's so a very apostolic. strong apostolic father, I know. Wow. Yes. And I love the color, the purple, that royal color. I love that. And then we can see very clearly highlighted on there the Esther and the Mordecai. I love that. Explain, and I'm sure you'll get to this. You're probably fixing to get to this, but in case yeah. you weren't, just explain to us why you picked that as the title to your book. Well, you know, um, I picked that because let me just jump over to somewhere. Um, every Esther needs a Mordecai. We all need somebody who comes into our life and give us identity. 
-hmm. and coach us and mentor us, love us enough in the good times and the bad times <laughs> and give us all that tough love just to get us where we need to be. You know, um, when you are a person who is an Esther, Esther, um, if you read the book of Esther, you will see that there was a time that she didn't speak. She spoke um, once in chapter one, you see her speak a bit, chapter two, and then the whole chapter three, she didn't speak because Mordecai told her to be quiet. Ooh! And then we jump over to chapter four, then there was a situation Ooh. and she refused to speak because she was told in chapter one, two, somewhere that you can't speak. You have to hide your identity. So God is a God of order. Yeah. She was told by Mordecai not to speak. So God couldn't release her to speak when she wasn't the one who gave herself the mandate not to speak. So the person who shut the door had the keys to open the door. So it oh. was God's guideline to put um, apostolic order, you know, to say that if your father, your mentor told you to be quiet for a while, when your time of speaking come, comes, you are not authorized to just start speaking by yourself. You need to wait for the same order. So she had to behave the way she behaved to give Mordecai the room to come back again and be the apostolic father that, that who said to her, now is the time to speak. And if you don't speak, something is going to happen and God is going to hold you responsible. So she needed that wow. guideline, not only before she went to the contest of the trying to become the queen, but through her, her life, she needed a Mordecai to even start at the gate. The gate wasn't, he wasn't at the gate just to be a gate man to the king, but there was a queen who was in the house, who was somebody put in his hand to watch over. So he had to stand as a watchman in the natural. But in essence, it's a picture of showing us the watchman that he was in the spirit. So the yeah. gate, is, yes, he was standing at the gate to make sure nothing bad comes in and nothing good goes out. So people see him as a gate man of the king. But if you have a revelation from God, you will see him as God's gate man protecting God's treasure because God's treasure was in that building, you know, where Mordecai was standing at the gate and Esther was the treasure. And Esther was not yeah. just a treasure. Esther was God's purpose. Mm. He, she was a bridge to achieving God's purpose, God's plan. So God put Mordecai <laughs> outside of the gate to protect what was inside that belongs to the kingdom. So um, every Esther needs a Mordecai because her identity was revealed to her by Mordecai. She was trained in so many ways by Mordecai. And um, people need to read the book because a lot of um, young women or older women who were young before are struggling in their identity and purpose because there was no fatherly voice. There was no real mentor. There was no real coach. There was no wow. real love. And sometimes a tough love. There was no watchman over them. That's why some of them got raped. You know. Sorry, son. They keep sending me message. I don't know how to block this. Um, so every extra truly needs a Mordecai. And I said in the book, um, Mordecai can be a woman and he can be a man because we're not talking about a gender. We are talking about a spirit and a mantle. So a Come woman... On. Sorry, people are sending me messages. I don't know how to just shut that down. That's a okay. It's a new phone. I, I haven't even learned. I had to get a new one in California. Um, <laughs> and I could... Yeah, and so I still haven't learned all the features. I'm like, I'm asking all these millennials and teenagers, could, hey... I know you don't know me, but I, I, I need, how do I make it do X, Y, Z? And they're like, what version? I said, oh, it's a new one. Can you fix it for me? And they're like, oh, yeah, you just do blah, 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 blah. I'm like, thank you. And then they're like, it came with a book. And I'm like, honey, I didn't read that. Yeah. I can't see those little words. I'm not reading that. <laughs> just give me the, just tell me what to do. Yeah. I'm like that too. I'm like that too. So I have a new phone. I don't know how it works. People forgive me. But yeah, so that's, um. A little bit about really need to stop sending me messages. Um, so that's a little bit about the book, and there's so much I spoke about there. 
in portals of her garments and the, 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 the revelation God gave me about the banquets she was doing. I spoke about wisdom. I spoke about the power of prayer and um, the, 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 how she defeated. You know, they just need to get the book and get everything, you know, that God will want. Breaking the silence also. I spoke about the throne room, the power of the throne room and the power of emerging in such a time as this. So, and I spoke about the importance of our men rising up and taking their place. So that's why the book, if you have a husband, uncle, teacher, um, pastor, cousin, nephew, Come male, then you need to read this book. It's really a book also dedicated to the men to let them know we truly need them and they will Come find on. out a from Mordecai and learn from him. And we, we need the men to rise up. So it's a book for men. It's a yes. book for women, it's a book for the young, for the old. Um, you can use it also as your teaching tool because there are so many things. I talk about the different um, strategies of prayers and, you know, war, warfare engagement. It's a whole book of a lot of things. I talk about mentorship, divine alignment, divine connections, Ooh. obedience, wisdom, and you name it, um, the power of your garment and all of that. So I will love them to get it. Amazon. Apostle Claire. Yes, y'all, please get this book. Every woman, every Esther needs a Mordecai. And I just want to say that whether you are a spiritual son or a daughter, you need that Mordecai. I love this. I've got to get that book because the things you're talking about, I wasn't for sure the exact content of the book. And I have so many things that I'm doing. You know how that is as an apostolic woman. You can't watch yes. everybody's videos. You can't read everybody's book you know, that's out there, you would do nothing but do that if that was the mandate yes. on your life. You know, that would take yes. up all your time. And so, but yes. this is a book I personally am going to get you guys. Um, and so I want the wisdom that's in that book. I need that for my own life. And I want to <laughs> encourage y'all to get this book. I'm just saying. Uh, and so look at that. Oh, they're being so sweet. They are telling yes. um, you how to go to the control panel and fix something on the phone the half moon oh. thing or something, but she's on the video and I don't know if she can do that while she's live on the video. Maybe yeah. she can, maybe she can't, I don't know, but we're already on here, you guys. But when you're talking about the men, needing the men, sometimes women can get in a role and mm -hmm. forget or even get to the point because maybe they have truly been hurt by men to where they think that they just, God's doing a great thing in them and they think mm -hmm. that they can just discount the men. Or just not yes. deal with them. And that's not God's mm -hmm. heart. That's not the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I love and I can, even though there's no difference between the men and the women, you know, spiritually with the Lord. I do appreciate, though, the big hand or the fist that I call it, mm -hmm. that many of mm -hmm. the men that I'm connected to. Um, mm -hmm. you know, they, they've got such wisdom and they're able in the spirit realm oftentimes yes. to see or discern things that I miss. Yes, and you know because why men and women think differently, differently and I yes. need I need that input you know I can't mm -hmm. just be around only women you know that would be mm -hmm. a messed up whacked out mm -hmm. world you know yes, <laughs> yes that's true wow wow that's true. so we really, we really we really need men I think one of my passions for this season is to really encourage our men to rise up and to yes. encourage our women to pray for the men and just understand that God made it so that men came first. It doesn't mean that God is not using women. It doesn't mean yeah. that women are not powerful. It just has to do with the proper order and how God will want things to be. So I'm just in, in the place where I think um, order is so important and having our men in the right place and we align rightly with all of that is very important to us. Um, I have a word that God, it is so hot in Holland. I feel like I'm in the oven, but anywho. Um, you know, um, I have a word for this season that God has really given me. And that word is called, I, I name it, I gave it to my church. I say, God said, from July, we've entered our season of movement. And I really believe that a lot of Sorry about this, people just messaging me when I'm online. You know, I really believe that in this season, a lot of people are in a place of transition. And in that yeah. transition, there's to be a lot of movement. People need to hear the word of the Lord. And the movement is for a positive reason. It's not going to be for a negative um, 
reason is, is positive. There is movement upon us if people can just hear the word of the Lord. And God began to speak to me. I have a scripture here that I want to give people to back out, to back up what I'm trying to say. Forgive me, my house is like an oven when I put off the ventilator because Holland is like, I don't know how oh, many no. things, but we are cooking in Holland like hot, hot, hot everywhere. It's like really Sahara days. But anyhow, um, the Lord began to speak to me, woman of God. We, uh, if you don't mind, I want to share something to the people who are watching us today. If they go to the book of um, John chapter 5, in John chapter 5, we see a man at the pool of Bethesda. God yes. gave us a picture of a man who was there for 38 good years. That 38, those 38 years, there was no movement. He was stagnated. He wasn't going forward. He tried so many times to get the moving in his life, but he wasn't uh, moving anywhere because in his mind, he thought he needed people to help him to get into the pool. And somehow nobody helped him to get into the pool. But God wow. has a destiny for that man. God had a plan for that man. God had a set time for that man, for his deliverance and everything. And I call him the except, and I call him exceptional because his deliverance wasn't going to come the way that it came to other people. Sometimes you find yourself in a predicament and you begin to think that um, because Sister A goes to this church and she got her breakthrough and got married, so that's where all the single sisters should we go or should go. <laughs> And, and you go there and nobody is looking at you. That's because you are exceptional. You are not everybody else. God has, the, time. God has the promise for your life. God knows how he's going to lead you and the road that he's going to take you. And the Bible says he knows the way that we take where he has tried us, which have come out as pure gold. So this is not a season to follow the crowd, but to pay attention on the leading of the spirit, how God wants to lead you individually and not per se the crowd, even though we are called to connect, work with people and align to people, but there is an individual leading in this season. That's and right. only those who understand that they are exceptional, we're going to listen to that voice and say, okay, all of you going to California to start a church, I'm staying right here. God didn't call me for California. And I know things don't look the way you all think it should look, but this is where God calls me. I'm going to stay right here. Why? Because I am exceptional. So I want everybody online to write down exceptional. I am exceptional. If they can- Type that in. Yeah, I'm exceptional. Yes, that Claim it. I am exceptional. Woo! This is the word of the Lord for somebody. I am exceptional. And I want all of you to share, 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 because this word is going to really bless somebody. Share in groups, share through Messenger, WhatsApp, call somebody, let them know the word of the Lord is being released. So for those exceptional people, one of God, they've come into a season where the God now begins to move towards them. Because you've waited for your pastor to help you. Your pastor didn't help yeah. you. You waited for your apostle. You waited for your grand auntie or for your uncle to die before you become rich and he's still alive. He's not dying anytime soon. So for those people, God is saying, I'm allowing people to reject you. I'm allowing people Ooh. to ignore you because oh. your help is not going to come from the hand of men. Your help is going to come directly from Jehovah Jireh himself and i come to prophesy and tell somebody help is on the way jesus is on the way the man from galilee is on the way you've been stuck at the pool of bethesda maybe for you for you maybe it's five years one year 10 years this man was 38 years his case was chronic but jesus was on the way i need to remind you that 38 years doesn't mean that he was forgotten he was not forgotten at Come all on. because he was making, Jesus was timing his deliverance, his date, his time and everything. So Jesus yeah. came to town and went yeah. to the man and Jesus began to ask this man, do you want to be made whole? And the man Come said, uh, he didn't answer Jesus' question, yeah. but he went on to answer something else that was in his mind. He said, oh, I have nobody to put me in. Every time the water be stirred, I try to go in, somebody goes in front of me. That wasn't the question. Jesus was, was like, Somebody send me a message again. So Jesus was like, do you want it? And if you really want it, how bad do you want it? Because Ooh. if you really want it, 
to you will not just wait for everybody to come and help you you will crawl you will do something you will shout you will take the boat you will take the plane bicycle yeah. walk something you know it's time to be active yourself don't wait for handouts Ooh. but you become the one who hand things out to people because you are born and created to be a lender not a borrower so jesus was asking this man Amen. a vital question i call you to give but you've been sitting at the pool for 38 years looking for somebody to help you but anyhow jesus in his mercy and in his grace he went on as he helped the man anyway he told the man pick up your bed and walk somebody needs to hear me after 38 years the man had an encounter from jesus and jesus said to the man Pick Ooh. up your bed and walk. And that's where the prophetic word came from uh, uh, for the season from the season of movement is the season that God is telling many who have been stuck and stagnated and rejected, dejected and whatever. It's time to pick up your bed and walk. If you are out there, I want you to hear the voice of the Lord. It is time for you to pick up your bed and work. I want at least everybody online to write it down. Pick up your bed and work. It's Come on. time for you. I, I don't know who's online with us today, but I will repeat it one more time. It is time for you to pick up your bed and work. What are you saying, Apostle Claire? I am saying it's your season for movement. Movement is upon you, and even now, wow. as I speak, the spirit of God is going to begin to engage you and begin to untie you from those places and those things that have held you bound. But then, now, what I love about the story in John chapter 5, one of God, is that when Jesus told the man to pick up his bed and begin to walk, something began to happen. You see, that when he picked up his bed and began to walk, let us read um, John chapter 5. Let us read from verse 8 to verse 10. Okay. No, to verse 11. Let's read John chapter 5 from verse 8 to verse 11. Something powerful is happening in John chapter eight, yeah. 5, 8 to 11. If somebody can write that down for us. It says, Jesus said unto him, pick up your bed and walk. And immediately... The man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto the man that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee mm. to carry your bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same, on, the same said unto me, Pick up your bed and walk. Now, look, Jesus has already spoken the word. The man is healed. Suddenly, uh, immediately, he is healed, has his breakthrough. But now watch something is coming because this is also the prophetic word God gave me. Number one, the Bible says immediately in verse nine, immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was Sabbath. So now two things are happening here. Yeah. Movement and rest taking place at the same time. Somebody needs to get it. And oh my the gosh, same day, me, Andrea. The man was moving. He was healed on the day that rest was proclaimed. So rest and movement was happening side by side. So God began to speak through me. So this season is a season of movement in rest. It means you are going to have movement, but you're not going to have the kind of warfare that will cause you to have sweat in front of your head or cause you to be like, oh God, what am I going to do? You're going to build in rest. You're going to prophesy in rest. You're going to fast in rest. You're going to, everything that's going to be movement, you're going to be moving forward, but it's going to be along the peaceful streams. Peaceful streams does not mean minus work. It means work, but it's going mm -hmm. to be restful. You, you are going to have even things come against you, but you are going to experience the peace of God. I want people to write it down, movement in rest. There's going to be movement, movement. You will experience rest. You are going to travel in rest. You are going to be running. Traffic is going to be crazy, but there's something going to be upon you, and that thing is called rest. So we are in our season called movement in rest. I don't know if people are getting this. I'm not seeing your comments. Come on, move Come with on. us today. 
<clears throat> you guys have to move with us. There's you might can touch your there. screen and swipe to the left or swipe to the right. They updated Facebook, so I'm not sure if that still works with the new iPhone. Touch the screen and swipe to the right or to the left, or maybe touch the bottom and swipe up or something. Okay, should I do that or should they do that? You. I think that's for you. Does okay. anyone know? Should, yeah. Should I should I touch it? Yes. Yes. And then I will see comments. You should. You should be able to. Unless okay, I'm seeing it, it now. I'm seeing it now. I'm okay. seeing it now. Yes. So we are in our movement in rest. So this man, you see that the same day was Sabbath. But then now God began to teach me something. When you read further, it says, he picked up his bed, what he used to depend on. Now the thing was depending on him. That's the level of strength and grace God is going to put upon us. That your support system is no longer going to be able to support you, but now they are going to need you to support them. Oh, that's, that's for somebody. They've been carrying you. They've been leading you and thinking that without them, you can't survive. But now God is upgrading you. The tables are being turned around because he was depending on the bed, but now the bed was depending against so much weight and so much strength to begin to carry what you used to carry him. That's what is upon you in this season. So it was movement in rest. He was healed on Sabbath day. Two things happening at the same time. That's the double, double anointing coming to Ooh. you right now. The double, double anointing of blessing is flowing upon you right now. Whoever is hearing me, the double, double is upon you. Come on, somebody write it down. The double, double is upon me. And the Bible says, then, verse 10, the Jews therefore said unto him, that was cured. It is Sabbath day. It is a day of rest. It is a special day, a religious day. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. What is God saying? God is saying, I'm going to give you movement in rest, but rest doesn't mean for you that the enemy will rest. Ah. <laughs> it does. <laughs> so movement in rest doesn't mean the devil is going to go, go to rest and leave you in peace. No, mm. your movement in rest is going to attract the devil to come and begin to attack your movement. Oh. Whatever you are going to want to build in the season, you have your peace. God has given you your joy and your happiness. But watch the religious spirit come and begin to attack you, begin to persecute you, begin to speak come against on. you. So God is saying, why I am giving you movement in rest, you still need to be watchful in rest to know that That's the it. enemy will not rest. So you still need to wage war my god you still need to wait war to protect your movement and this is how you protect this is how you wage the war he gives us the guideline in the same word watch what happened verse 13 verse 12 john chapter 5 verse 12 is a clue pay attention then answer they him no what me saying no verse 11 okay john chapter Five, verse 11, the man gives us a clue how to deal with the warfare that will come against us in a time of movement in rest. He answered them, he, made, he that made me whole, the same said unto me, pick up your bed and walk. So when they came to him to begin to attack him against his movement, his breakthrough, he did not go into argument with them. He pointed <laughs> them back to Jesus. Right. What is God saying in this season? The enemy will come against you, but bear in mind, the battle is not yours, the battle is mine, says mm. the Lord. Oh. Don't go and begin to answer your critics, begin to try to prove yourself, begin to try, just tell them, you know what? Don't even go into it, just tell them, it's Jesus who told me to build the school. It's come Jesus on. who told me to prophesy. Jesus come told on. me to start the church. If you have any problem with me, don't bother yourself with me. Go talk to Jesus. This is the season that you point people to Jesus. You give come them on. talk to the hand <laughs> at night, and you say, go talk to Jesus because he's the one who anointed me. You say, I am a woman. I can preach. Mm. Don't, 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 don't disturb me. Go to Jesus because he's That's the one right. who called me before I was born, before my mother conceived me. He called me. He ordained me. He anointed 
anointed me. He's blessing me. So don't come with your drama to me. I don't want no drama queen or drama king. This is not the season because God has proclaimed over my life that this is the time that I begin to move in my rest in Sabbath. He's giving me my blessing in Sabbath. So I'm going to take my rest and keep on moving, keep on pushing, keep on on believing God for greater things because greater things are upon us in this season. It's the season for going from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from movement to movement. You will build, you will build. The momentum is building up. It's a time for fire and fire starters to arise all over the world. It's a time for apostles to take their place, intercessors Mm. take your place, prayer warriors take your place, teachers take your place, evangelists take your place. Whoever you are in the kingdom, teachers take your place. It's time for you to take your place and Mm. begin to move. And you have to maintain your rest. And in this season, you don't have to make any excuses for who you decide to leave behind. Because if there are a distortion to your rest, it means it's a sign. They are not those who are called to move with you in this season. I wonder if somebody is Mm. hearing the word of the Lord. So the man pointed them back to Jesus. So what you have to do, is send back every, everything back to Jesus. And then something else, I'm going to give one more scripture before I let the one of God to comment on this. And then we proceed from there also. So you also see in the books of um, Second Kings, chapter 7, verse 3 to 20, if we can run to it quickly, let me show you something. I'm about going to tap that out. Yes. So in this man's case, so second kings second kings seven thank you holy ghost i feel this second kings seven from three from three to twenty so i'm not going to read it but we can write it down and review it later for those who like to check out what i'm saying if it's coming from the word of god which i really encourage people to do anyway yeah so if, if you if you read the book of Second Kings, um, ve- chapter seven, verse three to twenty, you will see four leopards. These men they had leprosy, and there was a time of famine and all of that going on, and they were sitting at the gate. So they began to think to themselves because number one, they were stagnated in the place where they were because in the time past when you had leprosy, you couldn't go amongst people. You were kind of put in your place and you stay there because you don't want to affect or infect other people, whatever. So you see, the first man we spoke about at the pool of Bethesda, this man was crippled so that got him without movement, got him stagnated without movement. So crippled, being crippled hindered his movement and Jesus healed that. And you see how Jesus came and gave him movement. And then now we are seeing men with leprosy. They are stagnated. They can't go anywhere because they have that condition, the skin condition. And then they can't really also go into the city, not only because of their skin condition, because there was like their enemies in the camp, in the city where they were supposed to go. You have to read the word. to. I'm just summarizing the story to give understanding and move forward. So they were stagnated because it was like there was a wall behind them and there was a wall before them. But then God supernaturally met them not by person, but by faith in their heart, in their spirit, God stirred up faith. And faith began to say, if we stay here, we are going to die. If we go to the city, we might die. But we might, we, 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 we might as well just get on moving. God, God was tearing them up for movement. He said, you Ooh. have a condition that is telling you, giving you all the different excuses why you shouldn't move. Why you shouldn't go forward. You know, for some people, it could be your finances or whatever telling you, no, it's better to just stay here. You know, so they have a predicament. But God was building up faith in them. And faith began to tell them, it's better to die trying than to die doing nothing. So with that faith within them, they began to decide to move. So when you are in the season of movement, God is not going to allow you to have any excuses. Your leprosy will mean nothing. The warfare in the city and your enemies will mean nothing. The famine will mean nothing because it is in movement that you are going to discover your breakthrough. So these four lepers now, they began to move. 
they began to move towards the city. And when they started to move, the Bible said that the enemy began to herd a mighty staff of mighty army coming. So they ran away. Because when the men began to move by faith, their steps began to stir up things in the spirit and the people began to hear steps of a mighty army, but those were the steps of God. God made it so that they will begin to hear steps of warfare and threatening and they become threatened and they ran away. Now, because it was wow. a season of movement and God had already planned so many things for these lepers by their faith, they received the plunder, the spoils of the people became unto them and their enemy flee away. So in this scene of movement, God will stir of faith in your heart to begin to do crazy things, things that you're giving yourself an excuse in yeah, the no. beginning not to do. God is going to make you to do it. And it is in that movement that you are going to discover the blessing on the other side of the river. Had these people not moved, they would have never seen their enemies um, running away. They would have never seen the day of them having everything they needed, the spoils and everything. So in this season of movement, your blessing is on the other side of the movement and the river and everything so i want people to again hashtag and say movement is upon me it is the season of movement and you need to bust a move it's a spirit that has come upon the body of christ some of you will be stirred up feel stirred up to do certain things do not doubt god don't be like oh when i go there what am i going to see just go just move just trust God. Just believe God and keep on moving. Amen. On. Keep on Amen. moving. So I don't know if the woman of God wants to comment so far before I go on with the next scriptures that I have. Yes, yes, yes. I just love this. Later, I want us to pray, and I'm sure you've already got in mind to do that, praying at some point for people on here to have that movement, to break through, push through, and into the hindrance, you know, from my own personal life. Uh, like with the university, as soon as I got, we have eight different levels. And as soon as I got the first four published, the workbooks, the day that it went live, what happened? I had one of the worst um, social media attacks you could imagine um, come mm -hmm. against me. And I'm like, really? Really? But what mm -hmm. did I do? I had apostolic men in the kingdom of God mm -hmm. contact me from all over the United States. And every wow. one of them said the exact same thing. They said, mm -hmm. we have seen this or this is going on. I want you to push harder than you've ever pushed. Continue wow. on. Get up. Don't let it stop you. Don't address them. Don't look at it. Keep moving forward. Wow. Just keep mm. going. This was meant to wow. stop you, but you are doing something. You are building something, and we can Come tell on. that it is the Lord. And so that was mm. encouraging that they would take time out of their day just to tell me to keep moving because the first yes. reaction is to be, why would anybody yes. do that? <laughs> You're like, yes, well, I yes. wouldn't do that. I I wouldn't do that to people. You know what I'm saying? But yes. What is that? You just keep, just like you said, this whole thing that you've been talking about, um, you've been mm. teaching, you've been preaching, and that is to keep moving and resting in the Lord. So I had to pull back into the Lord, maintain yes. my rest. You know, I couldn't mm. break down. Yes, I had some moments where I went to the Lord and I cried about a few things. But what did I mm. do? I didn't stay there. I didn't stay long at all. I had to get mm. up again and keep pushing forward because there are people that depend on me. And many of you Come out on. there, there are people that depend on you. You can't lose mm. it. You can't stop. Mm. You can't mm -hmm. uh, just because you're under attack from the enemy. God told you to do that thing. And if you, God told come you on. to do that thing and you come under attack, and this is another thing these um, wonderful men of God told me. They said, you're in great company because of Jesus. Look what happened to Jesus. All Ooh. those religious devils, yes. come on. And so I just want to encourage you, and I know this is Apostle Claire Revealed's heart, is to encourage you as well to keep going, keep moving. Don't sit down. Uh, you're in a ring of fire, a ring of glory. Continue pushing that ring of fire. Come on, it goes in front of you where you go all you have to do is be willing to say yes and step forward you step stay in the yes. restful relationship with god but you step forward into movement oh my goodness come on mm. come on come wow. on step forward to movement it's really time for movement because you see when the enemy came against the man he didn't have time for nonsense because he knew this was the season 
He's been waiting for this for 38 years. You can't wait for so long and finally get your breakthrough and you want to give the attention to the devil. The devil is a, li is a liar. Come on. He should have come when you were there for 38 years, waiting, crying and begging Ooh. and waiting for somebody to help you. But now that you are on the move, you become unstoppable because your focus becomes the thing that God has ordained you to do in this season. So we are truly in the time that God wants to do so much. And I believe somebody is getting the word of the Lord. Another person, woman of God, who was in a time of stagnation and that hindered the movement of God in his life was Prophet Samuel. If we can go to, so I'm just giving other things, different dimensions and dynamics that can stop you from moving. Ooh. The man was there for 38 oh, years. No. The other men had leprosy. So there are different situations in life that can keep you from moving forward. But we see with the man at the pool, Jesus broke it. We see with the four lepers, God came by faith and broke it and moved them. So no matter where you are and no matter how long, God is able to push you forward. That's the essence of this message. When it's time for you to move, God will come with the hammer of the spirit and push you forward. Ooh. So let's go to the book of First Samuel chapter 16. Ooh, okay. First Samuel chapter 16. If somebody can write that down for us. I believe somebody is being blessed today, woman of God. Yes, I know I'm getting a lot of wisdom here myself. I, this, this is one of the reasons I love doing the videos. I dropped some things. Sorry. Um, I love doing videos with yourself and other um, people in the body of Christ is the amount of wisdom that we we get wisdom from the Lord, but we also get wisdom by being in fellowship with other Christians because my relationship with God is different than your relationship with God. And he says he tells us all in part so that I obviously have a relationship this way, but I have to have a relationship this way. And in this Come instance, on. it'd be like that with Apostle Claire revealed in myself. In order to learn, to gain knowledge, I don't have because there are people out there. I have knowledge. Others don't have. They have knowledge. That's I don't true. have. And some of the That's knowledge true. we have is in common. I get that. But there are different things that are aha, special hidden mysteries that God will share yes. with different people in the body of Christ that when we connect to them, it's like, I never saw yes. it that way. Wow, that's a key <laughs> that I needed. And you end up walking away from that relationship, not walk, not disconnecting. I don't mean that. I mean, you end up with keys and you're like, oh, that's true. oh my <laughs> goodness, this is what yes. I was missing. This is what I need to enter into that door that you keep showing me. And yet you, you oh, kept mom. saying, God, the door is open, but I couldn't enter in because I'm like, something's stopping me. And it's where we're ignorant. Anywhere we have ignorance that we just are, have a lack of knowledge can prevent mm. movement. That's true. Ooh. Can't prevent movement. Can't prevent movement. So yeah. in this time of movement, connection, I'm... Um, Woman of God, I like the way you, I love what you just said because you can't really be in movement if you are not humble. Ooh. Oh, if you are not humble, you have to be humble because sometimes your movement starts, like you said, from receiving from somebody, connecting with somebody, telling somebody that I can't in this area. Can you, can you help me? The man had to be hum humble enough and not be bitter to receive help from Jesus, because somebody would have been like, oh, I've been here for 38 years, where were you, and you know what, for yeah. no, but he was like, let's get this movement rolling, Come I've on. been waiting for it, you know, I have been anticipating for this, so let's get this ball rolling, so it's not a time to be prideful, I mean, take offense, and just begin to vent out when somebody wants to help you, you know you need the help, Humble your little self and gain the help and keep on moving. On. It's all about going somewhere and God <laughs> is going to use something or somebody to get you there. Amen. So be humble and receive from people and let people speak to your mind. You know, let people speak wisdom to you. Let people pray for you. You know, so I'm so happy you mentioned that because people think it's all about myself and God. But God uses people. Jesus was on earth and God as a man. God used him at that time as a man to help a man. So the man had to be humble enough to take help from that guy. That's understand? Right. So he didn't see him as a Messiah. Because when they asked him, why are you carrying your bed on the summer day? He said the person. He didn't even know like who he was. He just said the person. 
So it's not like he was receiving help from Jesus because he was Jesus. He didn't know he was Jesus. He just knew he was a guy who helped me. So he couldn't care. No. He, he didn't care about his background or status. All he knew was the guy was able to help him and he took the help. So that's yeah. it. So we are going um, to first Samuel chapter 16 from verse 1. You will see a very powerful picture of another man, a prophet who was stagnated. He was stagnated in his case is because he was mourning for Saul who had been rejected by God. Ooh. So there are different things that come in our life and keep us stagnated and not moving. And you see, when you read that scripture, God began to say to him, fill your flax with oil and move. Should I just read it? And the Lord said unto Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go. You see, he wasn't going, but God came to pronounce go. Go is movement. God, oh, somebody needs to get this. God is in the business of getting us move. Mm. God is in the business for moving us from oh, yeah. stagnation to the place of motion. He said, fill your heart, your flags with oil and go. I will send you. This is all movement. Go. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king. He had a mission for him. He had purpose for him, but he was sitting there because of the heaviness of mourning. So if you are mourning anything, any loss, any person, any rejection this day, God is coming to tell you no more mourning. It's time for you to rise up and fill your flats with oil. That means you need the supernatural grace of God, the anointing of God, the power of God. Go back to prayer, go back to worship, go back to fasting, do whatever you used to do to Amen. get your oil on. Fill Come your flats with oil and move. Because for this next move of God, you're going to need the anointing of God. You're going to need the grace of God. You're going to need the power of God. You're going to need the arm of God. So God is moving us in movement. So God was breaking the spirit of mourning, the spirit of heaviness, the spirit of regret, and all of that from um, Samuel and telling it's time to move. He said, I have a new assignment. And with this assignment, you need the oil, the power of the Holy Spirit. So I am giving Amen. you this scripture also to let you know that truly movement is upon us in this season. You know, whether you find yourself at the pool of Bethesda, you find yourself as a leper stuck between a rock and a hard place. Your skin problem is an issue. The famine in the city is an issue. And there are enemies in the, in the city that you are afraid of. It, it doesn't matter to God. God got you. God has you covered. Whether you are a prophet, someone mourning for something you've lost, a ministry, a business, a loved one, or whatsoever, you lost some money, God say it doesn't matter in this season. I still want you to rise up and keep on moving. I've Ooh. come to take off the place of submission, off the place where you just sit and you are waiting for handouts. You are going to be so empowered that you become the one to be giving those handouts to those who need it. No longer will you be a beggar. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So you see, Samuel also needed a help. Why is God using the picture of Samuel to talk to us at this very moment? Because sometimes you can be a leader and be powerful. You think you need nobody. You think you need no encouragement. You think you need no help. But this is Samuel, God's major prophet. He needed help from above. He was in a predicament. He couldn't get himself out. He needed the word of God to come to him. He needed the voice of God to come to him. So no, how power, mm. no matter how powerful you are, this word is for you. Come on. This word is for you. God is bringing this word into your home, into your situation right now to get you off where you've been blocked. Some of you are blocked in your mind, in your emo emotions, but God is saying, get out of your emotions. Oh. Because you cannot be born in your emotions and you want to move. So we need in this season, woman of God, to deal with our emotions. Some of us are so all over the place with our emotions. Every little thing gets us scared. We disconnect from where God wants us to connect to because somebody said something, did something, looked at us the wrong way, and we are like, bye, I'm out of here. And then you stop your movement. You Ooh. stop your movement by being so touchy 
feeling, you know, you know, or is it feeling, touching, touching, feeling, whatever, you know, being so sensitive, you know, this is not the time to be super over sensitive. It's the time to walk in the spirit. The calling your names keep on working. The throwing stones are going to keep on working. They say you are just a. Come on. <laughs> on my phone, sending me messages. They're calling you Jezebel. Keep on walking. Come on. No matter what they do in this season, remember you are in your movement and the enemy will come to stop your movement. You saw with the man at the pool of Bethesda. Immediately, he began moving. The enemy Ooh. rose up to attack him. So you have to be watchful for that enemy who's going to rise up to attack you in your time of movement. So Samuel went and he fulfilled God's agenda. So another person who was stagnated because of problem was Elijah. Let's go to First King, First Kings 19, verse 4 to 7. I hope this is blessing somebody. Yes. Oh my goodness, it's blessing me. Y'all tap that in. We're going to First Kings. 19. 19. Four, four, to, four first, to seven. Four through seven. First Kings 19, four through seven. And y'all, yes. uh, some of you may not be used to this much scripture, but it's needed. I'm telling you. Um, and this is a nice thing that the woman of God took this time to prepare this word, that she has gotten into the word. She has found multiple examples talking about the concepts that she's bringing us today. And I'm telling you, the things that she's saying are accurate. Thank you, Cheeto, for putting that on here. First Kings 19, 4 yes. through 7. And thank you, woman of God, Apostle Claire Revealed, for digging this out in the scripture, presenting it this way. Um, because some of this, even though I've read this over and over again, the concept, the way that you're bringing it out, I am gleaning from this. And I know if I am, other people are as well. I don't ever yes. want to get on here and go, yes, I know this already. You know, mm. it is yes. bringing life to me, okay? And Come on. so thank you so much. <laughs> you are welcome, and I'm grateful. Thank you for having me. And I bless everybody online watching us. Um, God is faithful. So we are going to First King 19, um, 4 to 7. When you look at that scripture, you will see that Elijah, this mighty man of God, was also in a place of stagnation. And this is after he's gone through his issues with Jezebel. And then he came to a place of a still stand. One of the places I love is, okay, let me read it. Um, let me see. The Bible says from verse 4, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. Who does that? Who does that? I mean, you take your own self into a wilderness. He himself, not the devil, not nobody, but he was dealing with so many issues and he just backed out. He was like, you know what? Let it go. I'm just going, you know, David wow. go to the cave or whatever and he just go to the wilderness by himself. He himself, nobody put, not, he wasn't blown by the wind into the wilderness. The Bible said, he himself went into a day's journey. Can you imagine a whole day going into the wilderness? Who does that? You know, into a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a Jupiter tree and he requested for himself that he might die. And he said, it is enough. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, he said, for I am not better than my father. As you see, he was going through a breakdown, a terrible breakdown. And this is a man of God. Woo. And as he lay there, I slept under the Jupiter tree. Behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake bacon on the coast and the crush of the water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. He went back to eat. Delivered, they went back. Isn't it like so many people fornicating last night, come to church, deliver, Ooh. you say, oh, I'm going to go Johnny. The next wow. morning, time you back in bed with Johnny. That was the case. He went back to eat. But God in his mercy sent the angel again because okay. God is 
God is determined to get Elijah moving. Look at what Ooh. is happening now. He fed, he was fed, he was supposed to be strengthened, but then he went back to the old thing, but God came Ooh. back with power. So God is determined to get on moving. And that's what is being revealed in verse 7. Let's read verse 7 together. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time. God of second chances. Come on. Yeah. The angel of the Lord came back again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat. Because now, the first time the angel came, the angel did not reveal the purpose of him being fed to him. But when he went back into his sleeping mode and suicide mode, the angel was like, no, I need to give you revelation for you to understand why it's important for you not to go back into sleeping in this season. It's a season of movement. Why? Now the angel is explaining. Arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee. The journey before you is great. The journey before you is powerful. You've been Come through on. something. You want to kill yourself. You took yourself into wilderness. You don't get out anymore. You don't brush your teeth no more. You don't open your window blinds no more. You don't sing those beautiful songs no more. But the angel Ooh. of the Lord came to the prophet and said, arise and eat. And he went to Ooh. somewhere, go to somewhere and said, Fill your plants with oil and go. And now, Elijah, you arise and eat. Eat and oil. Eat and oil. Preparation for the Ooh. journey. Preparation for the movement. When God wants to get you moving, he gives you the ability to prepare, prepare, prepare. Why? Uh -huh. Because the journey ahead of you is a great one. What are you saying, Apostle Claire? I am saying the glory of the latter house shall be greater than that of the former house. You might have lost the latter house. You might have gone yeah. through something. Jezebel attacked you. You feel like you're losing everything. You lost your church, your money, your honey, anything. It doesn't matter. The glory ahead of us is greater as we move. Before you can meet your ahead of you, you have to boss a move. If you don't move, you are not going to get the latter house glory because the latter house glory mm. is before, mm. not where you are, not where behind, is where you are going. That's <laughs> where you meet the latter house glory. So you must move, Elijah. You must move somewhere. You must move man at the pool ah. of Bethesda. Mm. I don't care mm. if you have leprosy, keep on moving. It's better to die trying than to die like a wimpy, 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 wimpy. Ah. Keep on moving. Moving is upon us in this Woo! season. It doesn't matter what they are saying about you. It doesn't matter. Keep on moving. If they are talking about you in one Woo! place where you keep on moving, by the time you move forward, you won't hear their voice anymore. You Come will on. only mm. hear their voice if you stay in the same place, that same voice Woo! talking in your ear. But when you keep on moving, you're getting further from that voice, further from them, further and further. And that voice is going to be behind you. The glory is ahead, not behind. It's not where you are. It's Ooh. in the movement. And Bible is it is a great one. It's a great movement ah! in front of us. And that's how determined God is to get on us moving. Because when Elijah went back to sleep, you would think God would just be like, oh, well, you know, I've tried, bye. But no, God said, uh-uh. This movement for this thing is too big for you to be asleep. God is breaking slumber in the name of Jesus. God is breaking the spirit the of laziness of in the name of Jesus. I come with the hammer of the Holy Ghost <laughs> and I break it off anyone online who is going to watch later also in the yeah. name of Jesus. And I decree you will stand up, arise, pick up your bed and begin to walk. You will pick up your mm. bed and oh, begin baby. to move. Get from your lazy place, from your tiring place, your suicide place, your morning place. You are going to begin to walk. I break any chain on your leg in the name of Jesus. I break any power of the voice of Jezebel, causing you to doubt yourself, to doubt your God, putting you in a cave or in a wilderness place. I call Come you on. out of the wilderness in the name of Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus. I also come out from amongst them, says the Lord. 
It's not the time to go with the crowd, but it's time to follow the glory cloud, leave the crowd, and jump into the cloud in the name of Jesus. It is time. It is time for you to move. It is time for you to go forward. God is calling us to a place of movement. God is calling the prophets. God is calling the lame. God is calling the heavy laden. God is saying today, I break that yoke from your life in the name of Jesus. No longer will you doubt yourself. But from now on, faith is going to build up in you. I see you moving forward. I see you marching forward. I see you soaring up. you that glory is not going to draw the fleas to you uh -uh. i lose fire against fleas i lose fire against yes glory in the name of jesus you are being beautified you are being built in the mighty name of jesus i decree a new day and in this new day there is movement in the name of jesus and the other person that was stagnated was Joshua. If we go to Joshua chapter one, Joshua chapter one. Joshua chapter, Joshua one. chapter one. Thank you, Lord. It's hot all but I feel this word. I feel this word. I can preach this the whole day, whole night, and I like it. So, Apostle Claire, do you want to just turn that back on and we'll just, you know, you can talk louder? I don't know. I'm good. I'm good. I'm okay. good. I'm, I'm so sorry. I feel so <laughs> I'm good. I'm going to be fine. I preach in Africa, so it's okay. So <laughs> I'm, I'm sweating. So Joshua chapter one. For those who want to search that out to make sure I am accurate with the word of God. If you begin to go to Joshua chapter one, you see God again is encountering a man. Ooh. It's funny that most of them are men, anyhow. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Oh. That's a different message for a different yes. day. <laughs> oh, goodness. It's a different message for a different day. We're not talking to that today. Um, Joshua chapter 1, God is encountering Joshua. And God said this to Joshua. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, arise. You understand? Because mourning has a way of frustrating movement. Ooh. The spirit of Ooh. mourning. Now, let me go a little bit back to Samuel. Mourning does not only um, stagnate you in your movement, but it drains out your oil. Oh! It drains out your oil. Somewhere a prophet is supposed to be ready at all time with his horn filled with oil. How come there was no oil in his, in his um, horn? Why did he have to feel when God came to him? He oh. ought to be prepared. But preparation was not going on anymore because he was there thinking about something, the old movement of God that God already abandoned. God already oh. let go of the old movement. So, and he was there mourning. And while he was mourning, his anointing, his oil was being dried up. You see, it dries up your prayer life. It dries up your fasting. It dries up your worship because you are just there thinking about all the bad things that have happened to you and your oh. oil is going down. So God is restoring your oil and your movement at the same time because you need the oil to facilitate your movement. I hope somebody caught that. You need the oil to facilitate. Write it down. You need the oil to facilitate your movement. Hallelujah. Ooh. You need your oil to facilitate your movement. So this is now Joshua also mourning for Moses. God had to come down to remind him that there was a whole nation, Israel, that still had to cross over through the Jordan. But because Joshua was there mourning for Moses, he couldn't move. So a whole nation was shut down. A whole movement was shut down because he was in, in mourning. But God, who is a God of movement, had to come again and say, Joshua, come on, get off your morning seed and take these people and cross the Jordan. And there are Ooh. lands and places that you still need to occupy. So when God has a plan for your future, he will never allow you to remain in a place of stagnation. 
you have to know that in all the cases, it is God himself coming down to move the people. That's how yes. intentional God is about us moving. I need somebody. But Y'all share the video. Yeah. God is so intentional about us moving that when it comes to him plucking somebody from a place of stagnation, he does not send a man. He does not send a woman. He comes down all by himself or he sends an angel. Ooh. That's how intentional God and serious God is about movement. Come on. God hates to see us stagnated. God hates to see us just sit down there like one big old block and just like, you know, whatever. Mm -mm. He's a moving God. He's unchangeable, yeah. but he's always moving. He's always doing things. He's always, you know, creating things still through us. You would think that God has created everything that needs to be created, but then he puts a divine idea within us and causes us to still continue creation. That's part of movement. I hope somebody is getting this. So he had to come and cause Joshua to begin to move because it was an assignment. So he came and just broke off that garment of, um, of mourning of him. So now I'm going to say one more thing and I pass on to Apostle and then we can have some conversations and pray. Is that okay, Apostle? Yeah, so yeah, now absolutely. Let me, show you, let me show you a last powerful thing before we go into discussion. You can ask questions also and then we want to pray for you. So when you go to the book of Mark, Mark, Chapter 4, you know, you for, I am a woman of the word. I love the Bible. So a day like this, I love to teach and preach. And I like to back things up with scripture. Because nowadays, people just accept anything people say without checking out where it comes from. Come on. Well, Come yeah, on. The word of God. So I'm trying to train my church that we be people who check things out from the scripture. So I'm just doing what I preach behind the scene online now so this is what i do in my church we always check things out by the scripture we don't want to be lazy people just prophesying amen i receive it i take it i catch it i grab it you don't even know where it comes from you're just grabbing everything it's like we have crap crap fingers grabbing oh. just grabbing is crap fingers it's a crap <clears throat> spirit anyway this is not my platform so let me behave myself ah, um you're doing <laughs> great y'all share the video share the video. There are people who are desperate to hear this message, but it's the truth. You know, we have to be careful uh, what we hear, what we receive, and back it up and check it out. Check out the facts. Check out the Word of God. Thank you. Yeah. So we are going to Mark chapter 4, verse 35 and 36. Ooh. If we are there. I hope somebody is being blessed. Are you guys being blessed out there? I hope you are being blessed. I hope yeah. you are being blessed. If you came late, we encourage you to watch the replay. We've been sharing a lot and it's going to bless you. Share with somebody, encourage somebody, tag somebody on this podcast because somebody needs to be moving in this season. So now we are going to read Mark um, chapter, where was I? Mark 4, 4 35 and 36. Mm. And then, and the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, let us cross over to the other side. You see, Jesus was also in the movement. He said, let us cross over to the other side. And when they had set away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there was also with him another little ships. And then verse 37 says, and there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Okay, let me break it down. Number one, from verse 36, we saw that Jesus was setting out with his disciples movement. They were going to mm. the other side. They were proclaiming movement, crossing over. What I love about verse 36 is that it says, and when they had sent, sent away the great multitude, I've been preaching the whole time I came on here saying that it's time not to flow with the crowd. 
it's time to leave some people behind. In the time of movement crossing over to the other side, you can't carry everybody with you. Jesus sent away the great multitude. These were followers, groupies, and all kind of people. You know, sometimes <laughs> you have groupies in the kingdom of God. They just want to get what you want. Don't really want a relationship. You're just hanging That's around. It. And some of them are spies. Now I did a spy through your, you know, your broadcast, your, your timeline. They don't, they don't say hello. They don't like things. They don't share things. They don't come in. But they are like Nicodemus spirit. They come in the night and begin to watch you. All the spies. I rebuke them in the name of Jesus. In the name of but Jesus. But I pray when they are watching my page that God will inspire them to become better. Hallelujah. Amen. So anyway, Jesus now. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So Jesus was crossing over with his disciples and they left the crowd behind. You have to let the crowd behind in this season. But what I was warning us about also is the warfare that will come against your movement in rest. They were moving in rest. How do I know the They were moving in rest. And how do I know? I know because Jesus was sleeping in peace. He was resting. He was calm in his transition. He was sleeping in the boat. He wasn't all over the place. But then what would happen? While he was resting in the boat and they were crossing over, is their movement. They arose a mighty storm and began to hit the boat. A mighty wind, a mighty storm of wind. And the waves beat into the sheep Ooh. now what is god telling us the means of your transportation in your movement some of you your finances is the means it's your boat to transfer you to the other side watch the enemy come, to come and just begin to blow against that thing but jesus was not moved because now he understood who sent him he was in peace because he knew who sent him. So he didn't even bother when the storm was there. He didn't attack it because he knew the battle wasn't his. The battle belongs to the father. Just like the man from the pool of Bethesda, he said, the man who sent me, you know, he's, who healed me is the one who said, I should carry my bed. The battle isn't mine. The battle is the Lord. So Jesus was at peace. But his disciple, disciples, who did not have the same faith like Jesus. They were the one in all the drama. Oh, don't you care that we perish and all of that? And Jesus spoke to them about faith. He said, he rebuked the wind. <laughs> and he asked them, why are you afraid? Verse 14. Why are you fearful? How is it that you have no faith? So in this season of movement, in rest, you have to understand that the enemy will still try to attack you in one way or the other. The enemy will still try to do something against your movement. But the key thing is that you have faith. Oh, somebody okay. needs to hear me. You have faith like Jesus that even when the storm comes, you don't be all panicking. The difference between Jesus and the disciples in the boat, that why he could sleep is that he had faith in the father who sent him to move. But the disciples were moving without faith. So when Ooh. the storm, they were all over the place in their emotions and drama and fear and all of that. So Jesus is teaching us in this season of movement in rest. What will keep you quiet even when the enemy comes is the faith that you have in the Father who sends you to move. So I will want to end this here and i can talk with a woman of god and we can go back and forth um depending on what she has in plan and then we can pray prophesy and i give it over amen. back to a woman of god. i hope somebody has been blessed by this word yes i know i've been blessed um this is pulling out of the word this is the kind of stuff that we need as the body of christ uh the wisdom the scripture because you don't want the wind to come and hit your boat and Suppose the wind comes and it's not the wind of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Anything that touches you, obviously God has allowed it for whatever reason, but you, you don't want to be ignorant in certain areas because we all know that's yes. where the enemy plays is anywhere mm -hmm. we lack knowledge. He will try mm -hmm. to do what? He'll try to confuse us. He will try to twist yes. the truth. If you don't fully know who you are,
who God mm. is or what the truth is in a matter, you can get, um, you know, slid over here or slid over there. That mm. wind will move yeah. you. But like Apostle mm. Claire has pulled out in all of this, if you were founded in the Lord and you are moving in the movement of God, recently God told me, you know, that wind, if it hits you, it's not going to pull you off course because you you see the finish line. You see where you're headed. You see where God told mm. you to go. And yes. I had a, a vision recently, uh, especially after some of the attacks I came under, the Lord told me, he said, don't worry about it. You are a train mm. going at such a high speed. They shouldn't have Whoa. walked out in front of you to try to stop you. You'll end up running mm. them over. And I said, I don't want to run people over. And he said, but that's their mm. choice. They can jump out mm. of the way and stop it. Or they're going to, the train, the movement of who I am mm. in you is going to run them over because I've told you to go here. Are you going to stop or are you going to keep going? I said, well, I'm going to keep going. He said, well, well, then it's their choice if the train run, runs them over. It's their mm -hmm. choice if the train hits them. It's their choice if if there's, uh, what would you call that, sideline damage because they got close mm -hmm. to what, and that'd be like touching the anointing. You know, we hear about yes. that a lot and things like that, yes. you know. And so I, I just love this, Apostle Claire revealed. This is such mm -hmm. knowledge right here. This is such wisdom. Um, and I did like how you uh, pulled out the fact of the Jezebel that voice that will try to shut your voice down. It will mm -hmm. try to put itself in an authority over you and try to tell mm -hmm. you what you're doing for the Lord is wrong or inappropriate. Mm -hmm. And then the throwing of the stones that you mentioned. Um, God told me when people were throwing so many stones at me, I said, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? And he said, build with the stones. I have Come just on. allowed you to now have material and stuff to build the kingdom with. And I was like, what? Yeah. He said, it's all how you look at it. You can see it as stones building a grave for you, piling it on yeah. top of you, or you can come mm. out from underneath all that, speak against and in contrariness to that, what I've told you to do, and take those stones that they've put at your feet and use it to build my kingdom with. Come on, take what come they on. meant for evil. The enemy meant it for evil, but I'm going to use it for my glory and begin to come build, on. and it elevates you. They've just given you the very tool to elevate you in the kingdom of God. They thought it would pull you down into a grave but the capstone they meant for you has rolled back on them Woo, come you. on <laughs> jesus jesus and, woo, woo. so i want to encourage you and i know this has been apostle claire Ville's heart is you know she said earlier about that movement they're maintaining that rest is push and press into that wall of hindrance you see it as a wall but god sees it already fallen you see it mm. as flames in your way, but God says, no, you're, the flame you are in, in, you know, wrapped in, the glory that you're walking in, as you hit that demonic flame, the, the glory flame always puts out the demonic flame. Come on. Mm, come it on. will overtake it. It will overthrow it. Come on. It will burn it up and out of the way. When you touch come darkness, on. it ceases. When you touch come darkness, it flees. But there's coming this time, this place that's in the body of Christ right now, a season, a, a, a really more, it's longer than a season, but it, darkness has nowhere else to flee now. Come on, it has nowhere else to flee. The light has exposed it. It has nowhere to go. And what happens is it tries to flee. And I keep seeing and hearing this. I release this until God gives me a new word to release. I'll yes. just release this. The angels are after what came at you because it when your light hit it for those of you who haven't sat down if you have sat down get back up again get up and keep moving Jesus. repent get up and move forward and it will just that movement and rest will be right back there but for those who especially who have not sat down I want to tell you this. The mm. angels are in pursuit of what came at you because it basically threw a rock and then tried to turn and run come on tried My to God. turn and run and act like why well, didn't <clears> do that or I, oh I'm God. entitled to do that. But the chariot, the fiery chariots are after those things. And you hear it. And it's not people we war against. It's principalities, mm. powers, rulers of darkness, spirits of wickedness. Sometimes you're up against strong men and people. Mm. And sometimes it's the principalities and powers of the air. And those chariots are running those things over. And you can feel and hear those demonic structures falling. We're saying that they have fallen. Jeez. Whoa, whoa. You know, mm. I preached at one place and I didn't even realize I had this on my shirt or had I known it. God hid it from my eyes. Apostle Claire revealed. 
or I wouldn't have. I had on a, I love sparkly things. I had on a red jacket with sparkles. And from the denominational background of Baptists, number one, we were always told never to wear red. They didn't see mm. it as the blood of Jesus. They saw it as a harlot color. But I was modestly dressed and everything on the back of my shirt. And I didn't even notice it under the hood. And everybody else could see it because the hood would move. But it was this huge dog on the back of my, my shirt. God. And the people there made a comment. And they said, well, you know, that's like um, you came in with that dog on your shirt. And I'm just like, dog. Whoa. And I had to go look at that thing. And and they're making the comment about uh, the dogs eating Jezebel. And I was like, but wow. I had I seen and recognized that my sweatshirt had a dog on the back of it. Because I try not to wear things that have certain types of emblems mm -hmm. or symbols, especially if somebody is religious in the room, they might see it meaning something it never was intended to mean by me, you know. And I was like, whoa, had I realized that was on there, I wouldn't have worn that sweatshirt. But mm. I, to them, they saw that as a, a prophetic symbol. And so I just want to decree and declare to you right now that those dogs are eating Jezebel, that you are forward movement. You are moving yes. on in spite of it. Those, uh, you know, those things are not stopping you, not stopping you. Apostle Claire mm. revealed, um, you know, was there anything else you wanted to add to this before we get to um, praying over some people or you may even get additional corporate words to release? Mm. Mm. No, I, I just feel like I've said everything that I came to say. Okay. And I want people to be so focused in this season. In the season of movement, you cannot be distracted. You cannot be walking on your lane because it is a direction. If you look at all the different words I've shared, um, somewhere had a different assignment. He was in his movement. Um, Elijah had his own different assignment. The people with leprosy had their own assignment, their own agenda. Um, the man of the pool, from the pool of Bethesda had his own agenda. Jesus was crossing over. Joshua had to cross the people over the Jordan and all of that. God has a road for all of us in a time of movement. Mm -hmm. Don't go and be looking at the four lepers and thinking like, I wish I had their breakthrough because they have all the spoils now. And then you jump from your boat of crossing over with Jesus and you over there with the leopards. It doesn't work. You know, and don't try to go join the camp of Joshua, when God called you to be an Elijah to go all by yourself. You know what I mean? Don't try to be oh, somewhere yeah. trying to fill your horn with oil Woo! when the angel just asks you to eat some bread and drink some water. So instruction is very important in this season because God is intentional and he is very particular about you. He's encountering you, your ministry, and every thing is going to do is that the blueprint he gives you, he won't give to your neighbor. So focus on your own agenda. On. The blueprint he gives your neighbor, he won't give to you. So if you are called in the kingdom to climb a mountain, what you may need is a ladder to climb Woo! the mountain. So you use your ladder and walk your lane to climb your mountain. Don't see somebody in a boat who is called to cross an ocean and you say, oh, I wish I had a boat. You don't need a boat to climb a mountain. You need your ladder. God will give <laughs> us. <laughs> God will give us what we need. Who cares if they have 50 boats? The point is with your mountain, you don't need a boat. You need a ladder. And if that's all what you have, that's what you need. That's what you work with. Bless them with their boats. Keep your focus on your lane. Because when you're watching their boat and you're thinking, oh, I wish I had that boat and blah, blah, blah. You lift your ladder. Somebody comes and gets your ladder. You get in the boat. You can't function with the boat because you were not equipped to paddle. Do they paddle that a boat? A boat? What can they do with a boat? You were not uh, equipped for that. You were equipped to climb a ladder because you are a mountaintop person. Are there any mountaintop people in the house? Woo! Come I believe on. I'm also there are some mountain top people in the house. And when you are a mountain top person, God will give you your own dressing. What you will need to climb a mountain, maybe a ladder and the way you will dress, a person in a boat may not need that same kind of dressing. 
I yes. dress when I'm preaching, I dress like a queen because I believe I am a bride of Christ and all of That's that. Right. I wear long dresses, they fit me well, they fit my body structure and what that don't go and wear those dresses because i wear them maybe god call you to reach a different crowd who move great with their trousers and skirts and it fits them do you do you if you like makeup do you don't try to be anybody else in this season accept who you are embrace you and walk you do you manifest you and when you manifest the true you, God is going to be glorified because he sees what he created. When you're walking yeah. around being somebody else, God's looking at you and he's seeing, not clear reveal, he's seeing some kind oh. of Chanel or, or whatever. God is like, we'll be that. You know, that's not clear. But God wants to see clear. God is happy when he sees me. The Bible says in Psalms uh, 46, verse 10, he said, there is a river. The stream thereof makes glad the Ooh. city of the Lord. Don't you know you are a river? You know, you are a stream. There is a river. God is the river. The streams, the people will come from God. The streams thereof make glad the city of God. So it takes all of us in our identity as individual rivers. No individual streams to make glad the city of God. So when the city of God sits and is looking around, he sees different streams coming in. They are looking. He's looking for Claire's stream. He's looking for Tiffany's stream. He's looking for yeah. Chino's stream. Because you are a stream. So when he sees, he's like, yeah, he's applauding for you. Welcome. The house of God gets happy yeah. when you come Woo! in. The house of God wants to see you come in. It doesn't, the house of God is not looking for only Tiffany to come in or Clary Ville to come mm -hmm. in or Joshua to come in. He's looking for all the streams that come That's from that. the river. If Woo! you are that unique river, be that river and walk in the house of God in your unique identity. And God is happy to see you when you come in because when he sits in Mount Zion, according to Hebrews chapter 12, and he sees you coming in, the angel sees you coming in, they the ancient on. one, the spirit of the firstborn, they are there hey. you coming in. The blood is there see you coming in. Jesus, our meditator, and, and meditator is there see you coming in. It's like, yes, this is clear. This is who I made her to be. This is who I created him to be. This is how I intended him or her to be. The city of God, there is a river. The rivers there of make, the, the is a river. The streams there of make glad. May our oh, eyes see joy in the face of the Father because we are coming into our own. We we are coming into our own identity. We know who we are. We know who we are. We know we are queens, and princesses, and kings and princes of I God. We are the untouchables, the one that God said, Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. We are yeah. chosen by God. We are ordained by God. We yeah. are loved by God. We are the beloved of God. We are called into the yeah. beloved of God. He speaks over us. He rejoices over us. He watches over us. He sings over us. He is blessed yeah. when we are coming in the house of the Lord. And our Abba Father is sitting at his throne. Yeah. And the door is open. And he looks to that door. And he sees somebody marching in. He sees somebody coming in. And he says, yes, that's Tiffany. Yes, that's Claire. It yeah. makes the heart of God happy. Wow. God rejoices to see you. So be you, authentic Amen. you, unique and I have, you. Yeah. I have a word to back that up, you know, an experience where um, I always wear more dressy clothes until here recently. And God had given me a mandate. He told me like about two and a half years ago, all about the millennial generation. I needed to reach them. But I like dressy clothes. I'm just going to be mm. honest. I like wearing lots of bling and jewelry and people send this to me from social media. Mm. And I'm so thankful for the things that y'all send mm. me and appreciative. Um, people send these things to me in the mail and that's beautiful. Mm. And I can remember the Lord telling me, he said, I want you to get a nose piercing. And this, somebody had sent me a neck collar that was all sparkly. And I was like, I don't wear stuff like that. I don't know who I'm going to give that to. Mm. Uh, it says you can wear it as a bracelet. I'll just wear it as a bracelet. And I'm going to mm. preach at a certain place. And the Lord said, oh, by the way, put that on your neck. And I said, 
Lord, is this your voice? <laughs> Yes, I said, yes, I don't yes. do neck collars. I don't do <laughs> that. You know, that's what my, that was my response. I'm getting dressed and I'm feeling grieved. I can feel mm. that I've grieved the Holy Spirit. And I'm putting my makeup on and he's like, make your di- lipstick a little darker. It accentuate your eyes. Put on more eye makeup. And I'm like, Lord, come on. No, wait a second. I said, great. I, I put it on. Okay, I put it on. I've got the blingy stuff mm. on. And I'm like, Lord, I just, I, I, oh, this goes against, I just, oh, this goes against a lot of things. He said, yeah, it goes against religion. I said, Lord, well, what ended up happening is I go to preach and I felt like I almost needed to apologize for the way that I was dressed, but you know, I just went ahead and (laughs) was who he asked me to be that evening. Okay. So this is very important because it's not my will and my desires, but it's his. This is what happened in an 11 year old girl would not come in the church. She was sitting out in a vehicle and the pastor's daughter goes out there to her and she says, don't you want to come inside? Don't you want to come inside? And she's just letting it play. She's letting my live stream play on her phone. Mm -hmm. It's just inside the church, but this, she had lost her brother. This 11 year old child had depression was gripping her. All this stuff was going on in her family and she glances over and she just decides to glance over to look at who is speaking in just a few feet away in the church. And she goes, Oh my gosh. Don't even ask me how she saw this in the live stream. She goes, she's got a nose piercing and she's got on a neck collar. And I'm like, you know, cause I didn't know this till later. And the pastor's daughter's like, yeah, she does. Look at that. This 11 year old gets out of the van and comes inside and lets me pray over her, minister to her and receives and begins to weep and cry because she had not allowed herself to weep and cry. She got deliverance and healing. Wow. Okay, she's still in the process of all of this, even now, so y'all pray for her. But she came inside the building because I was obedient to get a nose piercing and wear a neck collar to preach. Wow. Mm -hmm. So we have to, wherever God sends you, be willing. Now, that doesn't mean God, like if I heard a voice that said, come on, wear something crazy topless. I'm not doing that, okay? You know, that's you got to test the spirits as well. But that that let me know I had heard God. Because if nothing yes. significant had happened, I'd have been like, yes. oh, man, yes. maybe I'm, I, 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 <laughs> I'm just reading. Yes. I just, I, maybe, maybe, you know, because we all have to, uh, God said, test the spirits. But that mm. person received deliverance and came in the building because of my obedience in those two areas. My God. And so I love the fact that you brought that out. If God has it in that particular season or moment, and for me, oftentimes it's, region specific i'll go one Mm. region and people are like wow you're all dressed like somebody from the 90s you know or i'll go somewhere else and they're like you look different than i've ever seen you you're dressed like some of these millennials around here but if that's Mm. who i'm reaching if that's who i'm preaching and teaching to Mm. i'm not gonna compromise certain areas such as holiness i'm not compromising Mm. that but if my dress has to be a little different i have on blue jeans sometimes when i preach now But I don't wear holes in the blue jeans in the crotch or across my honey or certain things. You know what I'm saying? I don't have, I don't drop and you be seeing all my cleavage. Okay, there's certain things I don't compromise holiness, but I will wear or try to just like, was it, was it Peter or Paul? I think it was Paul. Paul. Okay, who said, I'm all things to everyone. Basically, he tries to relate to those that God sent him to. But again, yes. you don't compromise holiness. You don't compromise the values of God to do that. That's true. Yeah. Thank yes. you, Jesus. No, Thank it's you really Jesus. true. I think we really need to pay attention to the Holy Spirit and not become so um, yes. rigid about things and so st- stagnant in the place of our thoughts and not don't become religious. Follow the Holy Spirit and then just flow with that. You know, um, I am a person, I like dressing, dressing when I'm preaching. You know, um, I, I I even got the rebuke when you were speaking because God is trying to transform me into something new. And I'm still struggling with that because a while back, I made up my mind that, you know, if I'm coming to live videos, I'm not going to be doing makeup and all of that. I'm just going to come, be natural and myself. And God began to tell me that I'm taking you somewhere else and I want you to be proper. 
you know, I want you to be more proper in the sense that get yourself really well before you go online, before you do certain things. So while you were speaking, I got a review because I know he's been speaking to me about that. Even today when I was coming to this broadcast, it's like I was sensing like, should I really dress up? I was like, God, it's hot and this and that. But God takes us in a season. And sometimes like myself, I'm fighting with God now, a kind of, because, um, I was in a time of my insecurities in the past where I had like kilos of makeup and I wouldn't put anything like this on or this t-shirt. I would be so, I was so always, um, you know, in my dressing, I have to be, you know, on point. And it became yeah. like a slavery thing to me. And I came to Come the point, I was like, no, I'm delivered. I am delivered from all this Come on. Um, makeup. And I love makeup. I still do makeup, but I don't, enslave myself anymore like i have to because i just came to a place to believe i'm beautiful anyhow you know okay. whether i am a few kilos lighter or few kilos heavier or whatever what i wear i'm beautiful as long as i'm decent and believe yeah. me because of where god is taking me he is coaching me behind the scene that i want you to be to present yourself differently i want you to be more yeah. proper in the sense that i want you to upgrade some things prepare yourself before you go on live and do something and i'm like god i finally just feel free to just break loose and just be like, yeah. you know but then again when he was taking um this guy joseph into a new place joseph had to change his clothes and comb his hair and there was a change of garment so there are times that god is taking us to a new place or moses or whatever yeah. that he will cause us to change the way we dress and change comb our hair and fix ourselves and groom ourselves differently. So in that season, we need to listen to the word of God, listen to the voice of God and begin to obey. Because some people will judge you based on what you wear. Um, a man of God was preaching yeah. at my conference. He said, God opened a very big door for him, but he went with his skinny jeans because he likes his skinny jeans. They just pull him from the pulpit and threw him out. I mean, like, true story. Like, we don't do... Oh. Um, skinny jeans here yeah, we don't you know because he goes to other places because he ministers also to the youth so he's always with his nice t-shirts and good looking jeans and skinny jeans so he thought wow this other place i'm just going like i normally go to places but apparently that new season god was open really great doors for him but there were different rules so he had to change from that trip and go now and buy some he bought some suits you know, yeah. so now before he goes, he tries to discern, is this a place I go with suits? And wisdom also is important, Apostle. Sometimes um, you just have to watch around you. If you are going somewhere, you know, go to the people's website, go to their videos, try to get a feel of the environment, see how yeah. the people dress, the pastors dress. You can draw a little bit of wisdom on how to prepare yourself. If everybody there is, is dressing with jeans and some t-shirts and you come all suit up with your high heels carrying your handbag with 550 armor yeah. bearers carrying your water and all of that <laughs> it's the wrong environment you become a widow in the midst of the people come on so you have to use wisdom and just in, in, investigate i believe in investigating things when i'm going somewhere when you invited me the first time to be a guest on your platform i came i was following you already but when you said, come and minister on my platform, I was like, my God, let me go and look a little bit closer. <laughs> and who is she for real, you know? Yeah. yeah. You need to investigate things just to get a feel. Um, the people who came before me, how do they speak? Do they scream like, because I can scream. I'm a black woman, you know? So sometimes um, my sister, sister does come out. And I was like, okay, do we do I'm that? There or we do <laughs> so I had to check out like, oh boy. You know, so you, you, people of God, you will lose platforms and open doors because of lack of investigation and trying to align yourself. If they are sinning, you don't align. But there are little things you can choose to become everything to all men, to become everything. When you go amongst quiet, really, I go to Brazil, there are some churches that are very quiet. Women are not allowed to speak, but God allows me to come there as a speaker. It's a men's world. Only men. You don't see women in leadership. Men, like 100 men, will sit on top of the platform and you know, big guns. 
with their suits on, they are very straight. They, they don't smile. They don't smile, you know, you have to be serious because it is holy ground. Eh? So I come to be my loud self, you know, my African black self, and I'm just like, okay, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And the first is well, they look at me like, Talking to their neighbor, I was like, These people don't like their neighbors, but it's like they were trained that <laughs> you know, you come on the pulpit, you come to the pulpit, you preach the word, you give the revelation, and you move. So, I had to learn that the first time I went to Brazil. Like, you don't come here and be like, Hey, anybody okay? Clap your hands for Jesus. You don't do that, you know. So, I had to just <laughs> learn those things and this year because i learned my lesson and followed the guidelines i actually had to see learn from the men because i was the only woman amongst men in all the churches i went wow. to so i watched the men when the men cross their leg i cross my leg when they put their hands in front of their lap i did the same when all of them are looking very firm, I also look firm. When they boss a little bit of smile, I also smile. You know, you just mirror those things and you keep on going because you are on assignment and you don't want to lose your door. It doesn't Come cost on. me nothing to just relax for those few minutes. Come on. It's three hours church service. I can just be to become all men and save some souls for Christ. So That's I don't right. tell them to touch their neighbors no more because they don't touch their neighbors. I let it go. I check it out from the door. I let it at the door, enter in. And when I go to my black churches, we get the party back on. So you need to use wisdom in your <laughs> season of movement. Yes. Yeah, investigate. Investigate. If the men drink water, I drink water. The air of them don't drink, I don't drink. You know, so you have to look at your environment. I am in, in Brazil. When all of them stand up with their Bibles, I also stand up my heels. I had on heels. Them heels were killing me. My feet were being standing up. But when the when the leaders and men stood up to read the Bibles, and in Brazil, for example, those people sing one thousand songs. Like who does that? Choir number one, we sing. Choir number two, we sing. Choir number three, I'm like God. Choir number four, my feet. Oh Lord, my shoes. You know all those kind of things. But I'm just keeping <laughs> up appearance, standing straight with my Bible, and I have to preach in life for one hour. Preach the word with fire and. My feet, they are already killing me. But I watch how the men on the platform respond to what is happening. And I just follow them. And next year, I'm going back to Brazil. You see, because you watch your environment. I'm teaching somebody wisdom here, wisdom key. You watch your yeah. environment. Don't just be like, I'm preaching the gospel. I'm, anointing is not enough to keep you there. Anointing That's empowers it. you. To teach and do the work of God, but to keep you there and give you a place to preach and teach yeah. the platform, you need wisdom. You need your yeah. eyes open. Yeah. And when you see things, follow them. Don't carry yourself. Yeah, I am an American. This is how we do it. You're going to be like Holland. Let me tell people in Holland. When you come to Holland and you try to prove yourself, you're never coming back. Holland doesn't take nonsense from nobody. So when I have guests from Africa, America, England, or wherever come to Holland, I always coach them. I teach them the, 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 the guidelines in Holland, the culture. I tell them what to do and what not to do. I coach my host, my guests who come in, like, please don't do this. In Holland, they are going to take offense. So we need to learn those things, Apostle, and teach people how to go into movement, but then stay yeah. in movement, not just stay in movement, but grow in movements. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. And you know, that's just that's just wisdom right there. We have to do those kinds of things because there are cultural differences. And I have met people who had what I would consider it, it was a rebellious spirit who insisted I am who I am and I'm going to be who I am everywhere I go. And if you want to have that attitude, it can close those doors for you. I'm just mm. saying it can do that because again, it's wisdom to know where you're going. If I get called into a Baptist setting to preach and minister, they believe in signs, wonders, and miracles, but they, mm -hmm. um, now a lot of them now will allow the, your prayer language. But when I was mm -hmm. in the Baptist circles, okay, I got to, they didn't believe in preaching. So 
It mm -hmm. meant I could preach and teach, but I had to do it on the floor. I couldn't be up there behind the pulpit because they called that preaching. They saw me as an evangelist or a great teacher, so I had to do it on the floor. And so they called it teaching or just giving a testimony. And it was an extended testimony. You know what I'm saying? And they believed in signs, wonders, and miracles. But they, you oh know, God. obviously I couldn't break out into my prayer language. They would have labeled me a witch and it thrown me out the door. <laughs> but God wanted me there at that time to release and to do what he wanted me to do there. And so you just no. use wisdom. It, it doesn't mean I never pray in my prayer language. It means I prayed in beforehand in my prayer language. It meant after I left, I prayed in my prayer language. It meant God can do, you know, God can do. That's like when you're in the grocery store buying your groceries, do you go, the whole time you're going through Walmart? No, because you don't want them to call the popo or the little men with white coats to put you in a straight jacket and haul you off somewhere. It means you use wisdom, even in the grocery store. I have sung in my prayer language, and they thought it was a foreign language, which it is. They just didn't understand it wasn't French or something. And I just, and they just, and I remember when I stopped, because I got near the register, I didn't want to be disturbing. I'm using wisdom. One of the ladies said, no, please don't stop. I feel such peace when you're doing that. She had no clue I was singing in my prayer language over the, uh, it was like the, a veggie market. <laughs> and you know you just use wisdom <laughs> <laughs> my god my god Ooh. apostle do you want us to pray for the people um yeah do they have questions you want them to give in questions and yeah. for those of you who have been watching apostle am i i am the guest here i'm acting like the host anyhow but apostle i thank you so much for having me over we have been speaking so many different things since we came on we want to encourage you to share, share this video, um, get it to somebody. Yeah. If you came yeah. in, we invite you to watch the replay because we really share some th key things. I really preach the now word that God gave me for this season, for the people of God. It's going to help you, help your church, help whoever you want to help to be moving in this season. I even released some revelations that I didn't get before when I preached in my church. When I was sharing to them, I was like, wow. So get those get this word today share yeah. watch the replay over and over again and i think if apostle allows it um, if you have a question for yeah. me of apostle you can, ask or, you can answer that and then pray for you and maybe apostle will need to close so if you have a, a question for me i'm willing to receive your questions and apostle also may have some answers Amen. Go Anybody ahead and um, yeah. Um, we're waiting on some of your questions. Put a questions on here. Something related to the word that was released today. Most everyone so far has just keep saying they need prayer. Or they need a word. I know you got corporate words from this. There was a lot of wisdom that was dropped here today. Do you have a specific question you would like me to announce for P Apostle Claire revealed so that she can answer that? So that she can answer that. Somebody keeps asking, Rico, can I have a word? We've shared a word since we came here. Yes. We've shared words. So if you really want a word, um, Rico, I strongly um, encourage you to listen to this broadcast. Because from the beginning of this broadcasting now, it's been word after word. You know? Yes. Can I have a word? We've had, I mean, like, we've been here for almost how long and we've just given everything we've given everything that is yes. word so rico i encourage you please get the word from this word amen amen i'm not seeing asking. any specific questions at this time are you seeing some no somebody just wrote here and donna reynolds wrote well i could use some target said prayer got attack in my throat last thursday and it was progressed to laryngitis by Saturday and unproductive cough in lungs. Hmm. Okay, so what do you think? you have like a powerful release for her to just break that up? Yes, yes, yes. And so we just thank you right now for Donna. We thank you for anyone else who's infirmed, especially with that throat. One of the first things I picked up was just an attack to shut down your 
throat, your voice. Yeah. I know you intercede for a lot of uh, uh, pastors and people who are leaders in the body of Christ. And so, Father God, we thank you right now that angels go to Donna. That cough now becomes productive. That flame is moving and it shifts out of her lungs. We command those lungs to be whole and healed right now. Her throat to be soothed by that honey and balm of who you are, Lord Jesus. Pour down that um honey, that uh, milk, that wine. I just see that spiritually going down your throat. And we just thank you right now, Lord God, for that healing, healing, healing into her throat right now in the name of Jesus. Healing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Yes, Lord, we speak healing in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we pray for the power of the um, the stripes of the Jesus, of Jesus Christ, the healing power from the stripes of Jesus Christ to touch your truth right now. We come against that warfare in your life. We decree yes. and declare, Donna, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And we lose the fire of God against any demonic hand trying to shut down your voice by holding your throat and your vocal cords. I release uh, the, the power of the Holy Spirit upon your vocal cords, your lungs. Uh, let yes. your lungs be cleared right now. I lose fire. Receive it in your lungs to dry up any infirmity. I command every spirit of infirmity to go now and leave you Woo! in the name of Jesus. <laughs> we cover you with the blood of Jesus. We bind yes. the operation of any power of darkness trying to obstruct you, trying to hinder you. We decree and declare your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, there shall be no foreign agents in your body right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody has a question, Apostle, and Carmen yes. Cruz is asking, will Holy Spirit reveal the name of the enemy at, uh, attacking you? Wow. Will the Holy Spirit reveal the name of the enemy attacking you? Yes, I can answer yes. that. The Holy Spirit can reveal anything we need to, we, we need to know. He can reveal your enemy and he can reveal their names. He can reveal their addresses, their houses, everything. The kind of attack they are launching against you, the Holy Spirit can reveal it. But the question is not that can the Holy Spirit reveal because he always reveals. The point is, what do you do when he reveals? Oh. Man, what do you do when he reveals? When he reveals, you go into prayer, you go into warfare, and you break it, and you use the information Amen. he gives you with wisdom Ask him how to use that information. When you receive the name of an yeah. enemy attacking you, it's not for you to just put it on Facebook. Oh, I know now that Julie is attacking me. You wish you going down. <laughs> that's not wisdom. Come that's on, not that's wisdom. Not you walk there in private. You know, the yeah. Holy Spirit gave it to you in private, in secret. You warfare, you use it to your advantage in private and you warfare and pray. Amen. I Amen. hope that helps. And stay in forgiveness. Um, I, I want to say that. Yeah. Stay in forgiveness. There are times when, you know, you have people that you think just are one way or another. And then the Lord reveals to you and you hear their private conversations they've had with other people. You, it's like you're standing there and you're hearing it. It might be past conversations, current, or even in the future. And you're like, mm -hmm. Now, if it's future conversations, I try to pray to avert that because that's a demonic strategy from the enemy. And oftentimes, prayer will keep those from happening. But if it's current or in the past, it's like, oh, well, when God reveals that, you just got to be in forgiveness quickly. And it's a choice you choose. Cry and mm. weep before the Lord quickly. Don't stay in mourning over that situation because you got to keep movement. Mm. I love what Apostle Claire revealed on that. So... I love yes. your last name. <laughs> God has revealed. you revealing, revealed, and you, you know, you're Apostle Claire revealed. I love that. <laughs> Amen. So prophetic. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. There was another oh, question so I did see. I saw another question yeah. where someone asked, you know, when you're going to the other countries and you're sent there by God, is they said, do you go into fasting and prayer to prepare against the territorial spirits? And do you have intercessors join you as you go there? Wow. Um, I, I basically, I believe that you always prepare. You should prepare by word, yeah. you should prepare by prayer, you should prepare by fasting. Mm -hmm. Now, let me say from my, how I experienced God in this season. 
when I just started off, because I was so afraid about everything, I thought, oh my God, by the way, the heaven is going to collapse. By the way, you know, so I will pray for days and fast for days and all of that. But I've grown in a different place in my faith in God. And I believe that if I pray and God doesn't happen, nothing will still happen anyway. So I engage in the spirit and let the Holy Spirit guide me. I always yes. pray. I always fast. But I don't necessarily um, fast just before I go. Because I believe preparation should come before the assignment. Come on. So if you have to go to India next week and now it's time for you to pray, and fast, now that you have the assignment, you are already too late. That's what I believe. You can yeah. also, also pray to maintain. What I do nowadays, I pray to maintain because I've been praying already before this time came. That's so right. every prayer I'm doing now is just to activate those old things and to maintain. I've already built the strength. I've already prepared. When I'm reading the word nowadays, it's not like I'm trying to... Um, it's, it may sound crazy, but let me say, it's not like I'm trying to go. I've read the Bible cover to cover like six times, the whole Bible. So I have enough in my system. So when I'm going out for, uh, I'm going to Jamaica, for example, I take the theme of what they give me and I study just to refresh what is already in me to activate. So I don't, <laughs> it's crazy. I think about a word and I already know, okay, all I need to look is for the scriptures to back it up and the revelation flows from what I've studied. Mm. So you need to prepare from now. And when you are going, you're still studying to capture for that moment, but it's not the ultimate preparation. So I don't believe in, in, in religious fasting. I've gone to places and I never fasted. This, this may shock the religious people. Oh, 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 oh. Ah. Uh oh, oh. I, I didn't fast that day, that week, but I've always been fasting. Like now, I'm having one of my greatest conferences, which is actually a movement I'm building, the Garden of the Intercessors, is coming next year, 2020, April. I started praying two months ago. Yeah. So I'm not waiting for April to come or for March to begin to fast. I'm fasting now and praying now, asking God for guidance. I'm praying into it about the ministers and what I want God to do. So when it's the time, my team and myself may fast, but it doesn't go that kind of stressful way. I fast in rest. People fast in stress, like, oh, I can't eat. You know, if we don't, if we don't, if, if we eat meat this month, the glory is not going to come. The devil is a liar. The glory is going to show up because I've been preparing for the glory since last That's year. That's right. You know, come on. Yes. Come so on. I don't have religious kind of things that people, people do like, I'm going out, I'm going to fast three days before I go. No, I wait for the spirit. If I don't feel the grace to fast, I'm going to pray, God, you are with me, you go before me, and I'm going, and I tell my intercessors, back me up. And when I'm there, I'm Come praying on. as God leads. I Come hope on. this helps somebody yeah. because you may not be in my place of grace and think like, my God, she's crazy. But this is how I, I, I can only give you what I have. I can't That's lie that. to you that every time I want to go into nations, I fast for 40 days. I don't. I rarely fast for 40 days. I fast three days, seven days, 30, and 30 days, 21 days. Um, some few times I've done 40 days, but I really don't do 40 days. And if I don't feel like fasting, I pray, I bless God, and I bless my mission, and I go. God has me. If God doesn't want to put his angels around me to encamp around me. That's God's business. So that's how I trust God. I really trust God that he has Amen. me. I fly in planes. I don't believe that it's my prayer or, or whatever I do. I believe that it's God keeps me in the plane. So I I hope this helps. Maybe I just, Amen. I, do you think yes. I just mess up somebody? Or I help? did I help? I no, you up. helped. You helped. I will say this. I just want to back that up. When I have tried to fast in my own strength and it wasn't something that God asked me to do, I can tell it. I mm. actually went to the Lord. Um, it was pretty, you know, sometime in the last few months, I had, I, I couldn't think very well. I couldn't think clearly. And I was heavy fasting. And I had certain agendas. You know, sometimes we don't necessarily always go to the Lord. And I'm like, I'm going to fast with regards mm. to the situation or whatever it is. Mm. And so I did that and all. And then I was having, I was having memory issues. I couldn't remember this. I couldn't remember that. I couldn't remember where I put my keys. I always put my keys in the same place. For some reason they weren't in the same place. I, why are my shoes up here in this room? I always leave them by the door, you know, or in my closet, you know, just little things. I was like, what is going on? I went to the Lord about it. I'm thinking this is warfare. 
And the Lord said, your brain is starved for nutrition. Go have a nutrition shake and then eat some food and eat regular for a while. You've done too much mm-hmm. fasting and I haven't called you to all of that. And I went, that wow. was what I expected him wow. to say. I thought he was going to show wow. me some principality. I'm going to get 10 mm. intercessors, political intercessors throughout the U.S. on it. We were going to jump on the thing. And it was mm-hmm. nutrition related because God had not called me to do all of that. <laughs> wow. My God. My God. That, that is wisdom. That's the thing, one of God. You know, I, 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 I got report from, I'm going to say something crazy, not to scare people. We need to pray. We need to fast. Mm -hmm. Listen to Apostle, what she just said, and listen to me. I am believing God that we will come to a place of faith in God and trusting in God in everything that we do, that we don't have to turn it into work because Jesus already did all the work. We are just connecting with him and, Mm -hmm. you know, following his footsteps to receive what he's already done for us. Um, There are a couple of people who went into such crazy fasting. The day after the fasting, they died. (gasps) <gasps> people close in my in my yeah it's, it's a very disturbing story and I, I just think like how does that glorify god you know it, no. it, it doesn't glorify god it doesn't encourage the ones that you are leading that you are leading fasting and you did it so much that you the one who was pumping them like let's do this and you died because your 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 system couldn't function anymore you did something your system couldn't. the other one just ate something small and his system couldn't take it he died just on the spot you know so um with that i've really learned to care for myself i follow the signals yeah. in my body because his grace is made perfect in the place of my weakness god knows how far i can go Everybody uh-huh. has their level of grace, even in the physical things we do. Some people can lift up 10 kilos. Some people can lift up five kilos. Some people can lift up. Yeah. Some of us we can just lift up nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So in the spirit, it's the same thing. Don't force people to fast 40 days the way you do it. If you, can, if you don't drink for 40 days, you don't eat for 40 days and you are fine. God bless you. You know, but don't get everybody in your camp to do the same because everybody in your camp are not in the same place of grace or strength or maturity with you. God didn't give them the same mandate or the same mantle or the same kind of covering, you know. So we need to use wisdom. I tell my people, uh, if you are fasting for a couple of days, I give them the kind of fasting we, we are doing, but I always have a birth in it. I will also say to them, birth, if you are working, like now it's so hot in Holland. You can barely breathe in Holland, you know, to get people to just push all of them to fast for 40 days, no drinking or very little food. You can kill somebody doing all of that. If God uh-huh. didn't really call that fast and that dimension of fasting. So I would tell them, please, if you feel like drinking water, like you can get, you know, like you can breathe, please drink some water. If you feel like fainting because you haven't got some sugar in you or whatever, or fluid, Get something that keeps you going, keeps you alive. God already knows you want to do this fast. When Daniel um, got his answer from the fast that God called him to do, God didn't give him the answer after the 21 days. The Bible says from the day he set his heart, it means even before he started the fast, Mm. God already saw his heart towards the fasting and already granted the request, not based of what he did during the fast, but based of his heart condition towards the fast, even before he started the fast. So I am a person who has, I'm, lately I am really speaking against this religious kind of fasting that people do and just die and don't get no result and then blame God and then become discouraged because they fasted. God didn't call you. So, Apostle, we are speaking here wisdom and people need to know. God is not going to profit or the kingdom is not going to profit from you when you die untimely and go to heaven saying that you die for God. God didn't ask you to die for him. Jesus Christ already died for all of us. God lives forever. He does not need you to die for him. He sent Jesus to die for us. So, let's stop twisting the scripture upside down. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And see, that's wisdom. I did something that lacked wisdom. Uh, This was several years ago. It might have been 2011, 2012. Um, I had gone on a three-day fast. And I think I drank water, but nothing else but water. And it was very limited water. 
Um, so for three days, I had done much of nothing, and I blacked out, and I said, okay, Lord, when I come to, um, if I live, <laughs> you know, I'm like, Lord, if I, if I wake back up from this, because it was like I knew I goofed up, and, and he wasn't in it, and uh, completely, you know, and I said, okay, Lord, because <laughs> I was blacking out. I said, when I come to, if I come to again from this, I will eat something. I'm so sorry. So I did end up coming to, it was about 30-something minutes later, um, and Anyway, I went into the kitchen, and I ate and drank something very small and mild. And then I had this hamburger meat in the fridge, and it was going to go wow. bad if I didn't cook it. And I thought, well, I'll be – I don't want to refreeze it, so I'll cook it, but then I'll just freeze it because I probably need to eat a little bit, you know, work myself back into regular food. Well, it's cooking, and I got to smelling it, and it was really good. And I decided to eat me a burger with all the toppings. I said, well, I feel great now. I feel fine after I woke back up and ate a little bit. I'm fine. And when you come off a three-day fast, you don't eat a burger. <laughs> wow. You don't wow. eat a burger. I'm talking a homemade burger with the meat patty this thick. A big old homemade wow. burger. The meat patty's this thick. Mm. I'm not joking. The meat patty was ginormous. I had to mm. contact five major intercessors and say, pray for me. I feel like I'm dying. And I didn't know this because I hadn't studied fasting a lot. I didn't. I knew mm -hmm. fasting was good. I just didn't study what you should do. I'd always heard work your way back into the fast and come to find out the science behind that is you can, your kidneys can go into failure if you have that much protein hit your body suddenly because they have not been functioning. They have everything in you has been resting and then you throw a bunch of protein in it and then it's like, wow. it has to work its way back up into functioning. Wow. And so God. they were praying for me and immediately two of them responded. So you decided to go straight from a regular fast of nothingness into eating a lot, a lot of protein. What'd you eat a burger? And I'm like, you wow. know, the Lord was tattling on me. Come on. These are intercessors. These are prophets. And I, here I am. I'm like, oh, yes, ma'am. Wow. <laughs> you know? Wow. My and God. Use wisdom. Use wisdom. Wisdom. <laughs> Holy Spirit. You know, leading. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm very concerned for the body of Christ. How? Some of these fastings go, especially in my African community, they've really messed it up so much that a lot of people are dying untimely. We think it's the devil, but it's how we, we, we didn't use wisdom to fast and all of that. And even the generous of past, most of them died because they didn't take care of their temple well. They were Ooh. doing things and pushing things. And all of them died. They were big, great, miracle uh, performing people, but because the temple wasn't taken care of and they were pushing the bought things and they died and left things halfway that we can't really, we can trace their books and stuff, but we can't really trace much of what they really left beside what they preach because there was no time to take care of themselves. So um, I don't know why God took us to this um, dimension, why we are trying to close. Um, but I think God wants to tell us even in this time of movement, take care of yourself, get your rest if you need some vitamins, get vitamins. Sleep when you have to sleep. If you didn't sleep when you have to sleep, find some time to stay catch up with what you left behind and drink water. If you one of one time we, we declared a fast in my church, and that fast was that we were not going to eat anything sweet, anything sugary for 30 days. And one of my spiritual daughters almost died because she fainted. The fast was so heavy, and we were praying strong and we're not really eating and there was no sugar, nothing sweet, no bread, anything that was like, even by mistake on the label, there was some kind of sugar, whatever, we didn't take it. My God, that was like, your body goes into such a toxic in, in a short time, you know, because for years you've been taking all of those things and then bam, in one time you decide to shut down everything. The body went into so much stress that all of us, we couldn't think. There were days we just had this terrible headache, you know, because it, it was too much, you see. So that has taught me now when I declare a fast in the church, I keep watch to see how, lo how all of them are functioning. If they are all looking like, yeah, I know something. <laughs> I know something is off and I'm going to encourage them to drink something, eat some fruits, you know, that we take off some key things off the diet or whatever. But I don't want my people to die during fasting because that's the testimony. That Come doesn't on. glorify God. It doesn't encourage anybody. Wow. So for those of you yes. who are praying and fasting, keep on doing it. But use wisdom, listening to your, listen to your body. God is not going to send you to hell 
because you decide to drink a glass of water when you feel like you're about to That's die right. in the time of fasting. That's so right. that is work. So you reach the end of your rope. Grace begins. When you feel Amen. like you cannot go on anymore, that's when you, you, you switch to grace and grace carries you further. Don't yeah. do the work of grace for grace. Grace can do it all by himself. So use wisdom and rely on grace and God will get you through. Daniel didn't have to work before he received the prize. But when he thought about it and his heart condition was right toward it, God already released an angel. Amen. Amen. Please show us your book again. We're going to close the video now. Um, I, you know, I've got a uh, revival that's going on this evening, but it's every Esther needs a Mordecai, the power of, what is that? Spiritual authority. Okay. And this is by Claire Revealed. She herself wrote this book. It's inspired by Holy Spirit, of course. God asked her to write this book. It's got, please explain to us again what the different things are in the book. I encourage you to get this book. I'm going to get it. I'm downloading the audio version because that's how I do. Um, so I can listen to it as I'm doing things yeah. and driving. So go ahead. What's in the book, Apostle? Yeah. So this book, actually, um, I tell people it's a book for men. It's a book for women. It's a book for the young and for the old. I really encourage so many, so many men to get this book because um, Esther was a woman, a young lady who came from nowhere to somewhere. But in order for her to come there, she needed somebody. That's why when you look at the book, you will see a little hand holding a ah. big hand. You see a hand yeah. of a little girl holding the hand. So she needed Mordecai to hold her. And the Bible um, talks about um, we don't have so many men fathers, but we have many teachers. But uh, Mordecai was really more than just a mentor. He was a father. He was a prophetic voice. He was a watchman because I also reveal in the book his prophetic position as a gate man. People know Mordecai as a gate man of the king, but I got to, re to understand that he was not just the gate man to the king, but he was a gate man to the queen, protecting God's treasure that was in the building. So he had to stand in the gate to reveal his spiritual authority to guard which, that which belongs to God. And if you look at the book, you understand that, um, the, okay, let me reveal this. People have read the book of Esther, but they don't even know the significance of the banquets that were going on in the book of Esther. So in this book, I reveal that. Let me give mm. you a, a little um, um, t um, taste of that. When the king married Vashti, Vashti prepared a banquet, but the Bible says Vashti prepared a banquet for, for herself and her girls Ooh. On the part, during the party of the king. But then the Bible says during the king's party, the king prepared his own banquet. So Vashti had the capacity to prepare a banquet, but he ne she never bothered to discover how much the king loved a banquet, that he prepared his own, and he went on for days. That's how much he loved it. So when Esther wanted to conquer the king, you will see that she prepared a couple of banquets. <laughs> oh, God for the king because she discovered a secret to the heart of the man Ooh. so with that i spoke about wisdom oh. so she came in and gave the king what vashti wasn't giving to the king so that's ah. why <laughs> yeah so that's why when the king asked esther what can i do for you actually it would have been a great um scene and even cost her her life to be quiet and not speak when the king asks her a question. But the king had to ask her a, in several occasions, what can I do for you? Esther never answered because she kept feeding him what was blinding him, Jesus. Woo. She kept giving him. And then one of the things she did when the banquet, she brought in her man, her enemy. So I asked God, why will she bring in her enemy? Because Esther was about purpose, not romance. The, to bring in a friend, somebody in the picture will prevent the king from focusing on romance because Herman was a picture of business. Ooh. But I don't want to say everything I need for to get the book. Oh, uh, yeah, and, and I'm going to get that book. 
Let us know your PayPal as well. Um, I don't know if you have the capability oh, yeah. of typing that in there or if one of your, um, yeah. someone on here could type it either way. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm going to check it and try to see if I can grab it. Okay. So this book, there are so many things. I also spoke about the power of the throne room, the power of changing your garment. Ooh. And I revealed why Esther didn't want to speak and why Mordecai had to be the one to warn her because many people miss the fact that Mordecai was the one who told her in the beginning in chapter two to be quiet, chapter one, chapter two, to be silent, not to talk about her identity and to, to be oh. quiet. So she lived on that, that uh, voice of Mordecai. So to break her off that voice, God needed the authority, the voice of authority in Mordecai to release her. So sometimes some people put some things on you. It takes greater anointing to break you off, to release you in your new season. So I also explained that I'm more the kind, being, uh, a, a God being a man of order, he knew that if I didn't put it on you, I can take it off you. The one who put it on you have to take it off you. So God made her to wait for Mordecai. Yeah. So th this is my PayPal. If you want to sew, you can sew. So it's really yes, a book yes, that yes. I, I also teach about the power of prayer in the book, um, the different dimensions, the different praying women, the different praying men, and the different mantles. And I spoke about our Lord Jesus Christ because Mordecai and Esther are a type of Jesus Christ. Because Esther, let me say this one more time before about this book. Jesus was in the grave three days and rose up with victory and conquered the enemy, right? How many yeah. days was Esther in her praying closet? Three. And the Bible says when she rose, when mm. she came out of her prayer closet, she put on her royal robe. Now Matthew chapter and verse 28 says, chapter 28 says that when Jesus rose up from the grave, he rose up and said to his people, all power and authority has been given to me. So there is a co connection between the thumb of prayer, the threshing floor, that Esther went for three days and died <sighs> to become the queen. She had Ooh. to die for three days and resurrect as a king to receive the glory. So but people need to buy the book to, yeah. to get yeah. yeah, to get it. And I want to encourage you, you know, there is also purpose when we sow um, into a, uh, a leader, a ministry, an anointing. Um, you know, you're sowing seed, there's principles in that, it grows into a harvest, but you're also, uh, you know, she has a mandate that's on her life, you may have a similar mandate, and sowing into that obviously helps to um, encourage that harvest in your own life, you, it, it honors, number one, it honors, and that honor, you know, is multiplied back even towards your own self, and spiritually, this is the things that I know when I connect with people with different anointings and sewing is a type of connecting it. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually end up usually I get these. Uh, it's like a DNA download. And although it's Holy mm -hmm. Spirit and it's the Lord yes. Jesus, it's still if I had never connected or, quote, rubbed shoulders with them, so to speak, if I had never mm -hmm. sewn into their fields, mm -hmm. you know, that wouldn't have come to me. So. I would encourage you to sow where there is a good harvest and things are going on. You know, she has activity in her life. She has that forward movement and there's blessing in the favor of God on her life and sowing into that favor. Also, uh, there's a transfer. It's a wealth transfer and wealth is not always finances. Uh, so when you sow again, the favor of God, you have favor, but again, that is also, it becomes more active in your life. And so may God yes. right now increase for those that do so into Apostle Claire Revealed or wherever God's asking you to sow, that there is an increase right now upon that seed and that there is a thousandfold increase in the name of Jesus. Recently, I sowed into a man of God's life. I don't know him personally. Um, I don't know um, too much about the person's ministry, but they have um, a mandate on their life. Uh, and so I, I never carry cash, Apostle Claire. I never carry cash. Wow. And I was doing street ministry, and some person I didn't even know who was a pastor of a Hispanic church walked up to me and said, here, God told me to give you this. Wow. And I didn't know what it was, wow. so I looked at it, and it was it was a 10, a $10 bill. Wow. And he prayed a financial blessing on me, and he said, you'll know where to sow this. And I thought, well, this is strange. I put it in my pocket. I didn't think too much about it. 
And I'm like, Lord, I've never carried cash, but you wanted me to carry cash. I said, do I need to go by the ATM and get more cash? He said, no. Wow. And, but when I changed my clothes, mm. he said, put that $10 bill back in your clothes. That evening, my I went God. somewhere. And there was a man of God there that I did not know, but it's a famous mm. individual in the body of Christ. And yes. I thought to myself, why have I got this? And I felt like the Lord said, I'll give it to him. Well, I don't have access to that individual. Mm. There's no way I would ever wow. have access to that person. And somehow My at God. the end of the evening, when everything was done and over, I look across the room, I'm drunk in the Holy Ghost, and there is that individual. And I thought, well, mm. there's people around this person. I don't have access to them. If I walk up to them, you know, <laughs> I'll be floored mm. by security. Wow. I don't know how that works. And yet I heard the Lord at one point, he said, walk over there and give that. And I was like, Lord, it's only $10. Ooh. Oh my God. But it doesn't matter what you have or the amount. Hear me on this. Whether it's yes. what you consider small or what you consider giant. I asked God if he wanted yes. me to go buy an ATM and he said no. Uh -huh. That is my the God. amount God wanted me to give that individual. Okay? Mm. And so when I did that, I will tell you now, as soon as they grabbed hold of my hand, I was thrown backwards. The power of God shot into my life. And I don't know the full my extent God. of what occurred, but I know I received from the Lord due to that obedience. So be obedient today. My if you're hearing the Lord tell Jesus. you so into Apostle Claire revealed. And again, don't think about, you know, whatever amount God tells you, whether you think it's this or whether you think it's that. So what he says, because it's the leading of Holy yes. Spirit. And so Apostle Claire revealed, yes. you know, I just bless wow. you. God has blessed you. I don't think there's more I can say mm -hmm. towards you, but I, again, wow. there is an increase of nations. I see in your yes. hands, Especially um, yes. your, I guess it would be more your right hand, but I'm seeing a globe situated um, in that hand. And it's almost like mm -hmm. you're holding it up as a torch. You're holding it up to the Lord going, Lord, I will hold the nations in my hands in my prayers. I yes. will go where you ask me to go, Lord. I'm going to do yes. what you ask me to do. And I see these roads burning with fire, but the fire's going in front of you. And yes, there's fire yes. behind you because you stepped there, but the fire is going. Angels are going ahead of you in all that you're doing. And the flying, mm -hmm. um, the traveling, I see the planes, the trains, yes. I see the cars, I yes. see limos, I see See other people connecting with you, men and women of God. And God has gifted yes. you. This is one of the things I'm seeing. Some of the people that want to connect to you, yes, they're Christians. And I'm not going to say they're evil by any means, but their motive or agenda may be for selfish reasons. But God giving you the discernment to know, to know just how close you can or what you can or cannot yes. trust your heart to them about. Yes. And so we just bless you. We thank you. Apostle yes. Claire revealed again. We thank the Lord for you yes, and for your life. There is a protection. I see hidden manna, God feeding you that hidden manna yes, in this Lord, season. Yes, and you are you are yes, chewing Lord. it up. You're swallowing it down. Yes, Some of it you feel like maybe even that God is feeding it to you so fast yes, and you're swallowing it. You're like, Lord, I swallowed that down whole. Shouldn't I you know, chewed on it a while longer? And yet the Lord is saying no. And in due season, it's causing that to come up. And some of it will be tablets in your hands, these books that you write. And some of it will be words. And it's like I see you as a mother bird, this giant eagle feeding eaglets. And an eagle has to feed the eaglets sometimes, especially when those dibs are young. They have to put their mouth inside that one's mouth. Yes. Come on yes. and regurgitate it. So God has mm -hmm. you in a spiritual motherhood of where you can regurgitate yes. the finely chewed up regurgitation food. And yet yes. he has those around you who are mature that are taking the tablets and the bigger food that you just lay out and they have to come and dine for their own self. And so, Father yes. God, we thank you. We bless this woman of God, Lord God. We just praise you for her yes. life, and thank you for the anointing yes. on her life, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We've gone so much longer over, and I just bless you. Thank you so much, Apostle Claire Revealed. Thank you, thank you, thank you for today. Oh, oh wow. I have to thank you, Apostle. I'm so blessed. I'm so glad. Thank you for this privilege. I honor you, and I so appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I bless everyone there. I bless your new season. I bless also your season of movement and all the things that God is going to do in your life. And I bless your time of rest because you've also truly entered into that time of rest, movement in rest. That's why God will allow me to bring this word on your platform because it's also part of what you have received in this season.
So thank you. And I bless everyone online. Somebody was asking Apostle, they were saying, where can they get my book? Yeah, Every explanation of the time. You can get this book on Amazon. Or if you want me to give you a signed copy, you can inbox me and I'm going to ship it to you. Amen. You can send the money through PayPal and it will come to you wherever you are. But for your, if you want it very easily, you can get it on Amazon. So that's where you can get yes. it. Yes. 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 Also love you and love you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Blessings Bye -bye. you all. See you later.